Welcome back, everybody. Uh, right, shed all stuff to race through. The chances are that I may have to really speed up on certain things. So I'll just say one final time. Everything, and ev I mean literally everything that I've spoke about is covered in way more depth on the bonus disc that comes with these DVDs that you walk away with. All the contacts with the insurance companies, the PA companies, the, 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 the therapy even for hypnotherapy if you choose to get into that, the scripts in. There's a complete business on that disc. It's got the business plans for you know making money from therapy. It's got the business plans for getting shuls. It's got templates for sales letters. Uh, most important of which, if you look in the folder, which is my example publicity, you will see this exact sales letter that I have used for the past 15 years. Uh, the only difference is the date that's on it, obviously that gets updated now and again, otherwise it looks outdated. That's worded in such a manner for booking shows, so that when you get the booking, they know they're booking someone that is a mind magician, persuasionist or whatever, um, and so that you can operate in England or anywhere in the world in a manner whereby, because you're not doing a hypnosis show, but there's no such thing, um, you can perform legally and lawfully within the law. Um, but it's worded in such a manner that it's positive so that the venues book you, in their head it conjures up the fact that the booking a hypnotist, without it ever saying that, just in case it gets in the hands of authority. So, you know, basically, if we miss out, it'll be on the list. Right. What if there are hecklers uh, in the venue, you know, some stud in the audience going, oh, yeah, I don't believe in hypnosis or whatever. It's happened to me. It does happen. Uh, it happens, you know, it's mo mo it doesn't tend to happen in theatres, in fairness, where people are paid like 10, 15, 18 quid, whatever, to come and see you. Because um, most people don't tend to spend that kind of money to be out and go and call somebody a but it will happen perhaps in where someone stumbled into a licensed drinking premises, didn't know there was a show on, and they're like, what the hell's this all about? What do you do? Well, I suggest you have a look at the disc that you get with this course, and you look at the book hall on there, my uh, book, which one is it in? It's in, um, it's in, I do believe it's actually in Confessions of a Celebrity Psychic. I used to do a contact in the dead ship, which you can learn off there. But at the back, there's a complete, like, mini course on how, how to add comedy to your act. But more importantly, there are loads of heckler stoppers. Now, these are, are one, one line of jokes. When you see a comedian or an act and somebody shouts something out disruptive or something happens and they suddenly come back with something, and it looks like they've made it up on the spot. Very rarely is it made up on the spot. It may have been, a, been adapted to that environment, so it's more relevant, but generally speaking, it's based on something that's age-old and been used for years, but it seems improvised because to the audience, it's unexpected someone has shared something out. It's unexpected to you, but you planned in advance for it, so you've learned some of these lines. Uh, a few examples, you know, stuff like, you let them do the shouty bit for a bit, but you've got the mic, so you can always be louder. And then you might just suddenly come back with stuff such as, doesn't work, work quite as well in this environment where I'm not getting heckled. Rob, heckle me. Uh, ginger. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was funny, sir. Quite funny, only quite funny. That's why I'm stood up here and you all sat down there. Now, either a simple little line like that is going to shut them up, or they might try again, which if they do, you're going to have to step up the, uh, the level of it. So, uh, echo me again, Rob. A bit more severe, uh, This is a load of shit. That'll be like your love life then, won't it? He didn't get a birth certificate, he got a bloody apology from Jurex. I ask you, ladies and gentlemen, I tell you, he got circumcised as a baby. Unfortunately, they threw the wrong piece away. Man, you, it's no skin off my nose. But anyway, <laughs> and and generally, when the audience then laugh, as you just did, because I, I tell the joke, you laugh, that's comedy. Uh, when, 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 when the audience laugh, okay, he feels a bit smaller and you're louder. It's very rare that you'll have to get past two one-liners. 
Uh, if, if he was to heckle me again, I'd have to step it up a level. So heckle me worse. I'm a better fucking hypnotist than you, you could. <laughs> well, yeah, when I was checking your girlfriend last night, she said you always sent her to fucking sleep as well. <laughs> um, you, it's progressed. <laughs> I thought that was quite good. I made that one up there and then. That's not in the book. I think that's quite good. Look at it, yes. Um, <laughs> You're nicking that. It is that good. Yeah, you see. But there are loads of examples of one line. If you remember them, you know. Sit against the wall, that's plastered it as well. Oh, the voice of a lark. A pillark. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's alright, he made a joke at my expense. Why shouldn't he make a fucking joke? After all, his parents did. And there's. There's loads of different ones. There's loads of, but it's relevant to what's So you shut them up, so you turn the crowd against them. Basically. Now, if you get the entire crowd, or a large majority of them, uh, heckling you, that is the time, frankly, to use the option in your contract where you get paid anyway. <laughs> Fuck off all. It's totally unlikely to happen, but it has happened to the best of performers out there at some point. It truly has. You know? Uh, I, I know Bernie Manning once uh, went on stage at a local club, and this has got to be the best, not heckler stopper, the best insult an audience member's ever come out with, because Bernard just, it, it, it shocked him, it stunned him. And the line the audience member came out with after Bernard had been on stage for five minutes was, Excuse me, mate! When's the fucking comedian starting? <laughs> and um, let's just say he died on his ass. So, you know, if, if it can happen to the greatest, and it can, don't, it's highly unlikely to happen because you've put all this in place. Uh, and generally speaking, you know, if people are paying to be there, then it's even less likely. If it's an event where they can walk in for free, I much prefer shows where people are paying a ticket price to be there. Does it make a difference, Alex, in terms of, do you think, you know, with volunteers and stuff like that, whether they're paid or not paid? Um... In terms of like responsiveness and stuff. I think in general, both from the audience point of view and the people who volunteer, if they're paid, they've got more of a commitment uh, rather than just walking in and seeing it for a they value it more. So if they choose to volunteer when they're paid to be there, then you, you, it really is narrowing down the chances of them going back to the audience as opposed to where they're not losing any money. To so bought a ticket and then volunteer. You've, you've really got to have it in your head that you're going to go with it. So yeah, I do, I do believe that you know when people are paying a decent ticket price, the perception, the prestige, uh, and the psychological environment it is so much easier. I really do. Yeah. What if ab reactions occur? This is incredibly important. What if an ab reaction occurs when the person is hypnotised? What's an ab reaction? Break it down. It's basically an abnormal reaction to being hypnotised. Well, that's what the book said. I'd say, but is it full? Because no one's hypnotised anyway. It's a, um, a psychological uh, attention seeking in some people device to get more attention. In other people, it can be a psychological uh, reaction to, and then anything. And I say anything rather than hypnosis because I've seen people watching a stand-up comedian, and it's not that they're offended by any of the gags, but for no logical reason, and the person swore blind afterwards, they no real reasoning in the red wine, a gag was told, and they just started crying uncontrollably. That is an ab reaction. I, I, I've had experiences when I'm doing magic tricks, um, and yeah, you've got the build-up, so you could argue that you're hypnotising them, you're drawing them in, you're fixating their attention on something, and then something unexpected happens, the trick, and it's like, wow, and it's such a shock to the system, that people have, have just like, spontaneously start crying, like, oh, I can't handle it. That's an ab reaction. So it's not exactly, it's not exactly true that it, hypnosis it, it, it causes ab reactions, it's not. Ab reactions can happen 
you know, any time, any place, anywhere. It's nothing to do with being hypnotised. But if it happens in the context of being hypnotised, or frankly in any context, you trust you're going to be doing it in the context of being hypnotised or an imagination exercise. You need to handle it in a manner that seems relevant to that context. Because normal everyday life, you might just go, hey, it'll be alright, well, you know, um, look, look, whatever it is you think about, just leave it, leave it. Oh, look, let's enjoy the show. Look, wipe your eyes, if you want a drink, distract the mind. It's something you do naturally for a friend out of instinct, you divert their attention. In this context, you've got to look like you're in control. So if they suddenly started crying or, or, or being a bit... The audience could panic. Now, it depends on what level they're doing it. If it's not to a huge level, you could let them do it for a second or two, and very quickly, knowing full well that these people have already earlier reacted to certain pieces of music, then if you played them again and suddenly said, Welcome back, Elvis, as a reminder to react, you could quickly... Set a track going and have somebody doing a routine and come over to these so that off mic you can deal with it while that routine's going on. So the audience are looking at that and you come over here, hand on shoulder, because you're only talking to them if you touch them on the shoulder, you've instilled that earlier. And just go, I'm going to count from one to three on the count of three. You'll be wide awake, you'll be back in a normal time and space. Everything's completely cancelled out and you're leaving that image, it's fading away, disappearing now in a way that feels calm, relaxing and fantastic for you. It's all positive and you're leaving it behind, you're coming back, not just where you're wide away. And then you don't ask them out, do they feel better? You say, you feel so much better now, don't you? So they go, yeah, that's sort of embedding it in the red, they do. So I'll tell you what, just take a few minutes, stay there, I'll be back with you, but it's, it's all right. And you carry on with the show for a little bit, just make sure they seem all right, which, they pretty much will. And then, later on, send them back. So you're not drawing the audience's attention to it too much, because otherwise you could panic them. And it could become mass hysteria. Fine. You know, you could get an irate boyfriend in the audience, this, that, the other. Um, if for some reason it's early on and you haven't got a routine to get the other people doing, you don't want, if this person suddenly starts crying, the other people to hear it. Because that, just like routines, could become infectious cause the sheep effect, a knock-on domino effect, and then you've got mass hysteria and it just, no, you don't want that. So, if it was a case of their eyes were all closed, I would say, I'm talking to everybody on the stage, one, two, three, you're wide awake, now all the people who are not abreacting will wake up. This person may, which if they do, at that point I'd instantly walk towards them patterning for a back on the sleep. That person only. And then I'd go, allowing these people to see what I'm doing, you think that was a negative, but you'll see why it's a positive. Isn't it? I'd go, on the count of three, you'll be wide awake only this time. Everything that you were, might have crossed your mind, because you don't know what it is, and you don't want to know. You're not there to do therapy. Everything that may have crossed your mind is completely cancelled out. Drifting away, disappearing, completely fading away right now, allowing you to return to full alertness, everything cancelled out and come every way and you feel fantastic in every nerve fibre, tissue or muscle of your body from the tips of your toes to the tips of your fingers. Not yet, if you understand, that's acceptance. One, light for a brighter. Two, feeling fantastic. Three, coming up out of it. You do, you feel so much better now, yeah? Okay, this happens very rarely, but ladies and gentlemen, because, you know, some people occasionally just uh, react in this manner, I'm going to send this lady back, or gentlemen, back to the audience. They're now fully back alert. You feel fantastic, don't you? Yes, so that's reassuring the audience on these people. But give this lady a huge round of applause for at least getting up here and being the star at the start of the show. Ego strengthening, feel good. So you embed it in your head to feel good. These people that are still technically hypnotised, from the positive or from the negative point of view, you've had to send somebody back. But it becomes a positive because you're showing that you're caring for them. So that means if you care for that person, you'll care for them. So that makes them feel safe. That builds up more rapport, I hate that word, and trust, which means they're more likely to be even more compliant to you. Does that make sense? They are really the key ways of dealing with, with ab reactions. I go into that in more depth in, in my book that's on the disc, but that is really it. It's as quickly and safely as possible getting them to stop thinking about whatever it is 
getting them back to full alertness, cancelling everything out, and by saying that phrase, can everything cancelled out, it's obviously applying both to the show and whatever it was that was in the mind, without causing hysteria in the audience or on the stage. Make sense, Chef? Yeah? Cool. What if an accident occurs? By accident, I mean somebody slipping. You've done your health and safety before, but somebody slips, falls, hurts themselves, cuts themselves, whatever. What do you do? Well, common sense is an element of it. If that person clearly is in pain, you are not going to let them continue in the show. If they've just slipped and you check they're okay, ask them. Would you like to continue or would you prefer to go back to the audience? Ask them, get their consent and do it in such a manner that the audience have heard it and the camera has covering yourself as well. If they say they want to continue, fine. If it's obvious, if they, they might say they want to continue, but if it's obvious to you they've got a bloody gash, cut them out or something, go no, it's, I'd soon send you back. But then go through the process of saying close your eyes, I'm going to count from one to three and go through a wake up, which I'll cover later, so that that's on camera, so you're covering yourself legally and if they believe really that they're hypnotised, they'll now believe they're really awake. In an ideal world, do a basic first aid course. It's useful in everyday life, you never know when it'll come in handy. But it could also be very useful if an, if an accident did occur. Again, you don't want to cause mass hysteria, so depending on the nature of the thing, you may choose, if the accident's happened here, you may choose to everyone on the stage look at me and sleep before they realise what's going on. Talking to everyone on the stage, any noises don't distract you whatsoever. They merely serve as a sign and a signal to help you relax completely. And then you can come over here and go, are you alright? Can we get this person sorted? Even if it means calling an ambulance, you get this person sorted, allow them to enjoy the relaxation, you've already set up the loop. Then go back to the show. The safety of the volunteers is utmost and paramount. Sure. There are certain circumstances where an accident or an incident must be reported to the authorities under the RIDDLE guidelines. That's R-I-D-D-O-R. R-I-D-D-O-R. I could tell you what it's RIDDLE called. guidelines. It's reporting of incidents, diseases, something or other. It doesn't make much difference. Uh, legally, if MD spends any particular length in hospital because of an accident or an incident, if there's a major injury, or worse still, there's death, this must be reported immediately. So injury, time in hospital, yeah. or death, must be reported. I mean, a gut finger you, you get away with, you know, don't be bringing them up every But it is going to have to go into the venue's accident day, but... Yeah. It's also <laughs> worthwhile for that purpose actually carrying your own accident book with you. Yeah. And that's Dates actually covered on the disc cover. because I also recommend on the disc that you carry a, your own proper health and safety at work approved first aid kit with you. Yeah. The venue should have one. <laughs> You'd be surprised how many don't. Um, so you're covering yourself from every level. Their safety is paramount. It's not just because you've been a sharing nice person also because you don't want to disrupt the show and it's also because you want rebookings, you want to get a level of professionalism that you get known for. Yeah. What if an emergency occurs? By that I mean fire alarm goes off, this, 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 that, the other. You prevent this at the start of the show. I don't mean you prevent the fire happening because it's out of your hands. What I mean is your prevention is at the beginning because when you do your major post-hypnotic suggestion, when you put them under, which we'll be covering shortly, you will say to them that for the rest of this evening, whilst you're in this building and in this building only, anything I say to you happens, for example. We you also put in that if for any reason you have to leave the building for an emergency, everything I have said will be completely cancelled out in every way. Now it depends on the nature of the venue. It's now prior to the smoking ban, it ain't good. Uh, people could smoke in theatre bars and venue bars. So then, I would have been saying, you know, if you leave this building, for any reason, everything's cancelled out. Trouble is now people go outside for a cigarette, don't they? So now I would say if you have to leave for an emergency, or it's the end of the show, 
then everything's completely cancelled out in every way. And if they are likely to go outside for a fag of stuff in an interval or a break, make sure either you personally are following them, keeping an eye, or you've got an attendant to do that. What if the PA fucks up, or what if there's a power cut? One of them saying someone, if the PA fucks up, if it's the music that's fucked, then I'm afraid basically you've got to revert to routines without music. Uh, if it's the microphone that's gone, then it depends on the size of the venue. Personally, I would find that in most venues, people would still be able to hear me even if the microphone went, as I project that voice out to the back. And you can get books on voice projection. You know, years ago in theatres, they did not have microphones. If people had to went in theatres and it helped that they were built for the acoustics, ideally. But they would project their voice so it could be heard. Some people may not feel comfortable with that. It's not ideal. You want that in your throat. But you can get through the show. If there's a power cut and it means the lights go out, well, if it's more entertainment venues, they should have the emergency lights that will be battery operated. Um, you might just about be able to be seen. But it's not going to be that visual, so you're going to be better off, if you want to continue the show, doing routines where you're not getting people to jump around, because that's health and safety then. Um, but doing routines that are, are audio, audio, stuff that you do on the radio. And there's an example of me doing a full hypnosis show on the radio, Kerrang Radio in Birmingham, on the dish you take away. So that gives you an idea of kind of, it's got to be stuff like, you know, on the camp three, when I wake you up, you're the world's greatest uh, psychic sexual agony aunt. And um, when you hear somebody's voice in the audience, uh, just from the sound of their voice, without even being able to see them, you'll be able to tell me their deepest, darkest sexual secrets. And then you can just say, somebody shout out your name. It doesn't matter, it's keeping things safe, and they'll just come out with all manner of bollocks. But sounds funny, because they're going, oh, he takes it up the ricker for a king-sized snicker on. <laughs> um, it's a chocolate bar in England, by the way, for those watching it in other countries, it's called Snicker. Um, so you can, with a bit of thought, still do a show in practically pretty much any situation. The ones that you can, a bit, a bit, I think, would be a bit obvious to you. In which case, you know, if like suddenly there was a, a definite fire or a bomb scare or something, obviously it's a case of waking these guys and girls up that you've got on stage as rapidly as possible in a calm, relaxed fashion where everything's cancelled out with a normal self in every way and everyone getting out of the building. What if you lose your props and costumes? You're thinking, why would you lose them? Well, I was booked for the Hilton Hotel in Bahrain and we flew via Amsterdam. Uh, got off the plane at Amsterdam, got on the plane for Bahrain. I arrived at Bahrain, go to collect my luggage. It's not there. Apparently it's in Amsterdam. <laughs> now I get ferried to the hotel. I'm on stage the following night, but the airport assure me that my stuff will be flown to Bahrain and it will be at the hotel by five o'clock the next night. I'm on stage at half past seven that night. I thought, hmm, do I take the chance? And my gut instinct was, yeah, it'll be fine. But the next morning when I got up out of bed, I thought, hmm, I, even my costume was lost. So I went to the local zoo, or uh, market, bought a pair of black trousers and a passable shirt, but they didn't sell oddly enough tailor-made stage suits like and, like. and I went to a, a shop there and I bought, it, I had to buy 40 of these music tapes. Went, oh, that one's got uh, Michael Jackson beat it on. Brilliant, right? That one's got Joe. I had to buy all these. I had to go, um, I had to buy all bits of shitey stuff off the market for props. I had to go back, which well, track six on the cassette tape. There were cassette tapes out there. I had to get it set so it's ready, so when that tape goes in, it's that track. Train somebody up, give them a bung to do the tapes, so that I could walk on stage that night to the several hundred people who paid a bloody fortune to be there and do a show. 
So that's how I got out of it. And yeah, oh, I'll be honest with you, I told the audience. I went on stage with me receipt and said I'd lost my luggage. And I said, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but the, 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 oh, the trouble I've had getting here, I tell you. No, it's dead easy. I wish I could have said that, but no. I said, uh, this, ladies and gentlemen, is my luggage and costumes. That is why I do not stand before you in the outfit you see on the posters. But, ladies and gentlemen, I didn't want to let you down tonight. I'm now playing them. You need to feel sorry for me, Jack. I didn't want to let you down tonight. So I've been out, and we're going to do a good show for you people. Are you up for a laugh? Yeah, I know that. I've got them. They're on my side. But also, the can't walk away and go, oh, it didn't look like it's bolster. Oh, well, that's how to overcome that. It will happen. There's no chairs. We covered that earlier. You know, I've even had it where there's been no stools. I'm afraid you've then got a new routine where people are stood up and when you put them to sleep, you've got to make sure you said, every time I say sleep, your eyes will close, your heavy head will fall forward, but your legs will be stiff and rigid. You will not fall down. And even then, you still need to in give them individual attention when you say sleep and keep hold just in case that it's about thinking ahead. What if there's no stage or it's too small? Because sometimes there's a little stage, it's a lovely width, but in depth, it's like just enough for the chairs. But if they were to stand up, they might fall off the bloody thing. Forget the stage then. Go on the dance floor. That is purely health and safety. What if you forget what to do? Well, you've got Alzheimer's. Um, no. Seriously, I, my memory is like a sieve. That is why I've got... I, I, I probably have got Alzheimer's. God knows. Um, have idiot boards, running orders for your music you prefer to. Have ones with bullet points for routines that if you forget, you can plan ahead. The chances are if you've got them stuck up, you'll never need to refer to them. It's sod's law, but if they're not stuck up, you'll be like, oh, sake. What if only one sex of volunteers, i.e. only men volunteer or only women? Well, that's prior preparation. That's sitting down, there's loads of routine ideas uh, out there. Just sitting down and thinking, man, if I only get men, what would I do? And it is about sitting down and pre-thinking pre it. Because the time will come where that happens. And suddenly you realise, I can't do half my routines because it takes one bloke and a woman for that to be funny. And there's nothing else I can really tell you on that. It's about you sitting back and thinking about it. What if you know they're faking it, i.e. they're not really hypnotised, which is a paradox because they're fucking not anywhere. But what if it's blatantly obvious to you? Well, as long as the audience are laughing and clapping, and these people, whilst obviously faking it, are not opening their eyes when you turn your back and going, that's the level where you want the finger signal and you get rid of them. My personal opinion, and this is one for you to choose yourself, but my personal opinion is, sod it. I'm there to make people laugh and clap. I couldn't care less. One I own to, whether hypnosis exists or it doesn't, whether they think it does or it doesn't, personally, that's not my view on it. Yours may be different. You may choose to send them back. I wouldn't advise it, but... What if you personally know the volunteers? So you, you go somewhere, and you go, hey, no, please welcome the volunteers to the stage. And they come up, and you realise, and they're back, oh, bloody hell. That's somebody from school, or someone from a past show. Well, the thing is, there's every chance they may have already been telling some of their friends that they know you. And there's every chance other people may have overheard that. And people can misinterpret that as, Ah, yeah, stooge, they've got up on stage. However, you can overcome that by immediately when you recognise them and go, Blimey, ladies and gentlemen, apparently I've got, nice to see you, John. Uh, an old friend from school, I've not seen for ages. But as long as you like, appear honest and upfront, people won't then start interpreting it as something negative. What if the licensing department are at the venue? Uh, because you've applied for a licence then if you've applied for a license, had it granted and they're there, make sure you stick to the laws, totally. Uh, if you're working under loopholes and the licensing are there going, 
This is not scientific or research. Well, obviously, you make sure they fill in the bloody questionnaires. You make sure that you ask them questions. Have you been hypnotised before? What does it feel like? Would you do it again? Uh, that's getting videoed on the cameras, so you've got proof that you're collecting your data. Um, they can get a police officer to enter the premises. They've got powers of entry under the 52 Hypnotism Act, but they cannot arrest you under the 1952 Hypnotism Act. So basically, there's very little they could do until the end of the show, anywhere. And even then, it wouldn't, as you'll see from the disc that you walk away with, it would probably most likely be considered to not be in the public interest to pursue the case through the courts. Because the maximum fine is only a thousand quid. Trouble is, what would be likely to happen is to pursue the premises license order, because under the license now 2003, it's a 20 grand fine and or six months imprisonment, they can lose a license, lose a livelihood. Then they'll go around saying how you ruined their life and try and make sure that you never get another book in anywhere ever again. That's why even though it doesn't apply to you, it's a good idea to, you know, toe the line. What if there's other hypnotists at the venue? I don't mean like, well, I, I mean it's on a couple of levels. I don't, I mean, if they're there to see the show and you've recognised somebody, whether they've told you they're going to be there or not, well, the first thing to do is not look like you have bothered. Don't look like, oh my God, that person, I know they've been doing it for years, longer than me, um, and start panicking. You've got to concentrate on the audience in the show. What I would be aware of is, some hypnotists are f***ers, especially if they're the street hypnosis brigade, the, the, the magicians turned hypnotist, or the one of Andy Jack Wings mob. Most of them are <laughs> Not all of them, there's some really nice people, some I regard as friends and talk to on the phone. Um, and it has been known, and I've seen it happen at shows, that in the interval, these <laughs> have gone up to the people who were on stage while they're doing interval routines, and knocked them out, because it's incredibly easy to hypnotise someone who's been hypnotised before, or who is still hypnotised, and then given them suggestions to do other things, so they've gone back to the stage doing something different than... Yeah, that's why you want someone keeping an eye on people in the interval. Or they've tried locking them down, i.e. hypnotising this person and going, in a few moments you'll be wide awake and you will not react to any other hypnotist tonight, you will not go back to sleep. This time when you're awoken, you will not react, you will not go back to sleep. You're wide awake. That's very simple. There's much better ways of doing lockdowns. Um, covered briefly on disc. And that's potentially fucking the short for you. Uh, now there's a couple of things you can do to avoid that. That's clearly when you do post it, nothing to the beginning. You know, for the rest of this evening in this room, you'll react to my suggestion, yes. Uh, but should you have to leave this building unexpectedly, everything will be cancelled out, you'll be your normal self in every way, you'll feel better than you did before you went to this building here this evening. Then when it comes to the interval, when you're out in the interval and you're believing that you're Steven Spielberg, the film director, and you're believing that you are a male prostitute touting for business, but you will not do anything sexual to anyone, unless you want to, and um, before you send them out into the audience, invisible mic again, before you send them out into the audience, you say to them, and most importantly of all, you will only react to the sound of my voice and my voice alone. Nod your head if you understand. Get a physical confirmation as well. If you do that, it's highly likely that the inexperienced wannabe street hypnotist is not going to be able to get them under. It's still possible they could, especially if they had their hands on any of my material and learned how to do things properly. Um, but if they did, that would be criminal assault. And I suggest you call the police and have the fuckers arrested. It's about time it happened to one of them. Um, not that I've got anything personal against any of them, you understand. Right, that is really the what ifs. Before we move on to inductions, can I just ask can anyone else off the top of your head think of something that could go wrong that you want to know the answer to? What if this happened? Can anything else occur to you that we've not covered be, either yesterday or today? Hurrah! 
than the fact I've sat down for hours writing down the ones that have happened to me and thinking of the ones that could happen that's paid off them. And I can assure you the majority of these have happened to me at some point in my career. Um, and they will to you at some point if you're doing enough shows. On the street, you've got other what ifs. What if the police walk up? Well, you know what the bottom line is? Even if you've got the insurance and you're saying you're a mind magician, even if you're doing it in an area where there's no local bylaw saying that you need a busking license or whatever, the police officer comes up and says, what are you doing? Be honest, say I'm a mind magician, I do magic tricks, I'm doing a bit like David Blaine. And the chances are they're going to say, not here, you're not, Sonny. Even though you're not, you could arguably say you're not doing anything wrong, if you're doing it in the right manner. Safest thing to do, just fuck off somewhere else. <laughs> Don't argue. Because the moment you start and argue and go, you know, actually, no, what I'm doing is right, officer, they could just turn around and arrest you for breach of the peace, a trumped up charge. And you'll have a few hours in the cell and this, that, the other. So it's just, it's just not worth it. Okay. Um, we've done that, we've done that, we've done that. Cool. That's at the end. I do believe that we are at. Inductions, because that is pretty much only one of the missing links. But before we hypnotise people, it would be pertinent to know how to wake them up. Now I've told you what to do if they don't wake up naturally. Um, we went through that before. What if they won't wake up? But in terms of them waking up normally when you want them to, okay? It's as simple as this. I'm talking to everybody on the stage. I'm going to count from one to ten. Now the reason I count, there's a little key to, from one to ten, is the numbers are going upwards. And you wake up in the morning, that's how to remember it. When I'm doing inductions, I count backwards, so the numbers are going down. Remember that as going down to sleep. Because in itself it's a non-verbal suggestion of awake to sleep. So an awakening, when my awakening literally is, and this is the same for hypnotherapy as well, the only difference with hypnotherapy is that one of the numbers, I would say something relevant to the reason why they came. So you no longer need one, crave or desire cigarettes and tobacco, in any way, shape or form, just as a final to do do But for stage, it would go something as, I'm talking to everybody on the stage, each and every one of you. If you sit there with your eyes tightly closed at all times, unless I say otherwise, using your powers of mind so effectively, you realise now that this time, when I count from one to ten, on the count of ten, then and only then, then and only then, you'll instantly be able to open your eyes. Your eyes will instantly be wide open, you'll be wide awake. And every single suggestion, thought or idea, every single suggestion, thought or idea, that I've given you this evening will be completely cancelled out in every way, shape and form. Not yet, if you understand. It covers you legally. You've got confirmation that this should therefore then be working. So, on one, every nerve, fibre, tissue and muscle in your body from the tips of your toes to the tips of your fingers, almost as if they're being washed with pure spring water, revitalising, re-energising you from tip to toe. Two and three, lighter and brighter, it's almost as if all the stresses, tensions, worries, fears and apprehensions of days and weeks gone by are leaving your mind and leaving your body now, making you feel so good, so fantastic inside. Four and five, realising that when you awaken in the morning, you'll awaken with an inner, warm, glow of confidence, a renewed optimism to life, a more positive attitude to get things done because you realise on the count of six. You can now equal the greatest achievements of life's greatest achievers. As on seven, your mind started to return to normal in every way. It's almost as if your personal laptop computer, any of the files concerning your time here on stage tonight are being wiped clean so that you're your normal self in every way, shape and form. Eight, lighter and brighter. Nine, coming up out of it. And on ten, wakey wakey, right to the side, open your eyes. Ladies and gentlemen, these people have been the stars of your show. Give them a huge round of applause. Thank you very much for getting up. And you send them back. So you get the ego shrinking going on. 
That's got loads of positivity built into it. It's not just a one, two, three, you're wide awake, which I have seen some people do. Uh, I refer you back to yesterday where it says that if you do not pay enough attention to the wake up, you can get done for criminal assault. Nothing to do with hypnosis laws. Refer you back to that book, Practicing Safe Hypnosis. But, you know, one to ten, that sort of length, that is, compared to most hypnotists, probably a longer than what they normally do at the end of their show wake up. But it's also the most important legally. And I'd say ethically and morally as well. So that is literally the wording. And that wording, work practically I imagine, I bet if you compare it, it'll be word perfect in my book that's on the disc that you take away. Well. So you know how to wake them up. You know what to do if there's problems. You know how to use the props, the music, the costume, the makeup, the stage, the stage graph. You know how to advertise it and do all the legal, lawful and safety stuff, whether it's on stage or on the street. Most of it's then common sense or referred to on the notes. So now we need induction. Just, uh, can we have time check in terms of... Uh, let's say? 20. 20. Cool. Oh, cool, 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 cool. Because cool. that, that means after we've got that taken out... Yes! We're on track! Brilliant! Um, right. The way I think it's best to do this, I've got so many to go through, is I'm going to tell you the name of the method that I am showing you, or at least what I call it, so you know what I call it in, the, in my book, or on the video that's on the disc, and that's the same for the people who've got the DVDs, you'll find an MPEG uh, Windows Movie video on the bonus disc with this package. Uh, where I go through loads of these as well, but with extreme close-ups of my feet and where to put your feet and where to put your fingers. So I'll tell you what it's called. I'll demonstrate it. And then, I, as it would look, doing it, and then I'll quickly tell you the key points, because, i.e., where your fingers go or whatever. Which then, when you watch the video footage again, uh, that's on your other disc, I'll rewind these DVDs, you can then look, oh yeah, when he said he had his foot there, it was there, he put his finger there to get the physical bits. And in terms of practice, I suggest, having watched that a few times, read the course notes that are on the disc, you get a friend and say, look, I'm not even going to try and hypnotise you, in fact, I want you to keep your eyes open, because I want you to, to, to just give me a hand, I don't want you hypnotised for this. And, and, just use them as a guinea pig to practice the physical movements until you get comfortable with them. Because the key thing is to feel comfortable and not, not pause and not suddenly stagger with things. Um, so, you know, actually, just for the sake of my back, would you mind demoing on somebody the falling backwards induction, please, Rob? Mm -hmm. Welcome back. And Mr. Robert at the temple.
gently relaxing time with the time going on. Just sleep, 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 relax, down deeper. Sinking, relaxing, gently down deeper. Sinking, relaxing, and drifting down gently. Now, as I separate your hands and drop your hand down towards the floor, just allow yourself to relax down deeper and deeper and deeper. So, here, eyes open, wide awake, wakey, wakey. Pop yourself up. That's how I do it. Now, the only difference between the way I do it and the way Alex does it is I know Alex has them put their hands by the sides. Uh, is the only difference. I don't know how much detail we can go into in this for time. I don't know if you want me to, to break that down a bit more step by step. But well, why are you here going so? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. If you stand here for a second. So, uh, uh, you'll notice... Can't first think without a doubt, doubt this is one of the most important the, the inductions you need to learn. Yeah, yeah. So. Absolutely. This is the induction I used for years and years and years. The only... I changed it eventually to the last induction you're going to learn at the end of this section, and you'll find out why when I get there. Um, but that aside, uh, as I said, I have the hands here because I've just done a hand lock. I know some people have it with their hands by their side. Now, the only thing is, first of all, just have a quick glance over your shoulder. Make sure there's enough room behind them to fall back. It seems obvious, but I've seen hypnotists and I'm going, whoa, he's taller than you think he is, fella. Uh, if there's a skirting board here, seriously. Obviously, here it's not really a problem, but when you're in small, pokey pubs, it can be a bit dodgy sometimes. Um, yes, so I have their hands there. Basically, uh, I, I kind of steer the person forward, so you're already kind of, um, um, what's the word, yeah, controlling them like this. So I pull them forward, don't really give them a lot of choice. I say, can you step, uh, step over this way for me, rather than can you step over this way for me. Step over this way, but I'm actually pushing them rather than anything else. They get to here, I say, put your feet together for me, toes and heels touching. That sentence will take a second for them to, to, to put that in their heads, so I don't give them a chance to think about it. I just kick their feet together like this, it, uh, quite, quite they can kick them in and they've got very little choice but to put their feet together and they sort of get knocked off balance a bit. I then take my foot, this the, the upstage foot, the one that's nearest the back of the stage, and I sort of knock against the back of here. Now what that does is that creates, you wouldn't stand in this position, I'm just doing it so you can hopefully see, that creates a pivot point for him where there's very little he can do to stop me from moving him however I want in any direction. Okay? I then put my knee I actually bash my knee against the back of his knee slightly. I don't mean bash, I mean I just place it firmly like this, okay? And that forces his knees to sort of slightly buckle a bit when I, when I apply pressure and lean backwards. If you think about it, if this is his legs and this is your legs, if you put them there, when you lean backwards, you're pushing his knees forward a bit anyway. So, I come in here, I say close your eyes and tip your head back. Now as I did that, I just put my hand over his eyes it's very difficult if somebody comes at you not to close your eyes because you, it's your reflex, isn't it? <laughs> I then tip their head back. And there's two ways I, they can do it. I've done it in both. I usually now use the, the, the sort of what I call the bridge of my thumb, and that just runs across their forehead just above the bridge of their nose, sort of there. Uh, or you can use your finger if you like. I know Alex tends to use his finger, I believe. Mm. Anyway, you get here. I tend to put my hands on his hands. I say, take a nice deep breath in. And I do it with them because they can hear me. I let it out. Good, take another nice deep breath in. And let it out. Wonderful. And then you just tell them what's going to happen. And then they know what to expect. In the next few minutes' time, you'll feel yourself gently, and sink, gently sinking and falling gently back. You will not fall and hurt yourself. I won't let you fall and hurt yourself. That alleviates their fears because a lot of people have, a, have a, an issue with falling back. You won't fall and hurt yourself. I won't let you fall and hurt yourself. You just sink and relax gently backwards. And as you, like, however you want to word it, really, as you land gently onto the floor, you relax into a lovely, relaxing state of hypnotic trance. As on three, the deeper you go, the better you feel, the better you feel, the deeper you continue to go. Two, sinking, relaxing, gently backwards. And now, you, you, it's fairly obvious, really. I'm not exact, I'm not going to let him go and let him fall, but that is kind of what it looks like to an audience who don't, haven't seen this broken down before. And if you've saw it before, it does look quite... Um, I mean, I do a lot of rugby clubs and stuff where you've got these huge guys who are six foot and absolutely massive. It looks amazing when I'm dropping them back. Not that I do the drop back anymore, when I used to. Um, so, and that's all you're going to tell them. And basically, if you've got your finger here, if you just gently rub your, run your finger, and I mean really gently, like you were stroking a cat or something, you know, it's gently, even more gently than that. It sort of, if I sort of do this, I pushed him, but you saw he was ready to go, so I just continued that up. So that's one thing, or alternatively, I just have my, what I call the bridge of my thumb across his forehead, and I literally just pull like this. This hand is ready to catch him here and here. Just lower him gently back. That wasn't as clean as the other one was, but I'm trying to do it in slow motion, that's why. Drop him down. Generally, their hands remain together, uh, in which case I just separate, and I say, so separate your hands, drop this hand down, and it flops. Again, if you want to do the flick that Alex did yesterday. Same with this one drop it down and flick it down, and it's done. Now I usually, before moving on to the next one, 
he's just lying there. And I would then just say, as you lie there on the floor, he can still hear absolutely every single word that I say and everything that goes on around him, he just doesn't care anymore. Um, and that just helps. If that person hits the floor, and for whatever reason you think they are maybe quite as hypnotised as you'd like them to be, uh, and they either, you think they might open their eyes or they might stir, I just tell them that and then they stay there. You can get up there. Sorry about that. So that's how I do it anyway. I know Alex is pretty much the same, but he just uses a finger on the floor. If you're not head. too heavy, can I? Yeah, yeah. I just find I've got a bit more control with the bridge. <laughs> It's probably the uh, lightest person in the room, in fairness, and I don't want to back up. Uh, yeah, you know the basic <laughs> principles behind. You'll, you'll say I do, but my. Uh... So it's like feet together, hands by your side, foot against the back, foot against the ankles, tilt your head while well back. So I've got my arm, uh, my elbow on your shoulder, tilt your head while well back. Take a nice deep breath in through your nose, then out through your mouth, in through your nose. Now to your mouth, I'm going to count from three to one on the count. One, you feel yourself falling gently backwards. I won't let you fall and hurt yourself. You just fall into a lovely, relaxed, sleep like set. Nice deep breath in. Three, feel yourself falling gently backwards. Two, four, and one, 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 back, 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 back. Sleep, relax, deeper, 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 deeper. Right, you can get up. Um, so I suppose, yeah, the only real difference is just to pay more attention to it, because my back is really knackered. Um, I used to literally just three, two, one, and I'd literally just perhaps take them back with one hand and lower them. But you find then that there's a hell of a lot more pressure you can stand up going on here, which then is pulling the crush your back and ooh, you end up with all manner of back problems. But more recently, just because I don't want to end up in a wheelchair, um, feet together, foot's there, head back, this elbow supporting the body because I don't want him falling backwards yet onto me because otherwise that's going to put strain on this arm across my back to here and screw me back up. But if I move my arm up a bit, then he would fall back. Okay, so that can be done in a minute. I'll give him the suggestions, and then three, I've got that gentle finger movement back. Two, he's starting to come. Now on three, the moment that I'm going to lift my elbow up so he'll drop, at the same time I get this other hand under his arm, so that then I can bring this finger up under there, and I've got so much more support in my body put him down that it's not knackering me back up as much and it's not as dram- quite as dramatic looking as the way Rob does it the only but it keeps me warm the thing is that when I do it I very much make a seat what's happening there is I can very because obviously I'm, I'm awake as well I can very yeah. much feel what's happening to, to me now. And, um, and it's very much a case of lowering somebody down uh, when I tend to do it I tend to let him hit against me here which is kind of the stronger bit of your body. And I more or less let them slide. My hands are still on them, so I'm kind of guiding. But I kind of try to let people slide. Obviously, that leg's in that position. And I try and keep it there for as long as possible and kind of let them slide down me as much as I can down my leg. And it means that I'm less holding their weight and more this leg would be here anyway than just sort of resting on it as they go down and these hands sort of steer them on the way down. But I mean, you more or less just have a practice with the weight. So would you do that straight from the hand clasp with the well being? Yeah, yeah, I, I just take them. That, if, you do, if you do the hand clasp, and you, especially if you do it in the manner of not asking them to try and separate the hands, but you said that the tighter they get, the more they shake, the more they shake, well, if their hands are doing that, you know that they're being either suggestible or responsive, okay? Doesn't matter, but they're the ones to concentrate on first. The next ones are the ones that are looking intently at the hands. You've told them to, but they're not looking at the person next to them or alive. They're taking it seriously, so they'd be the next ones. Do it in order, but yeah. In, in which case, then he's walking up. I mean, doing it my way. They'd be walking. Really, it's come this way, sir. That's fantastic. I'll do it sideways on, obviously. Ideally, you're doing it all facing the audience, so you can do loads of them dropping back across the stage, left to right. Feet together, hands against your chest. Tilt your head well back, nice deep breath, in through your nose, and out through your mouth. In through your nose, and out through your mouth. Three, two, one, pull it back, 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 sleep, relax. Um, it's should, it's still, out, but, yeah, yeah, but it makes them top heavy, so it's even more likely. The only reason I did that sideways is so you can see what I'm doing with your feet. Obviously, yeah. Normally, again, I do it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's there's... more impressive if people are falling away from the yeah. audience that way. <laughs> and it means you can have several people across the wings of the stairs. That's hilarious on camera, you really just do Indeed. Yeah, to answer that, though, basically, if you've got a row of people on a rational, 
smash through this because I don't want to save too much time. But if the no, you're right. Like I do believe that this is lots of fun. We've got like five minutes of this. Time, this, time, this, time, this, this, was, this was this was four years. The only induction I used in my show for four years. Uh, basically, they're, they're all stood in a line. Um, so you just got to the end of the handlock, which I do counting down. I know that Alex used to as well. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, and what energy hands stick together, lock together, glue. So everything. He's just in a row. Sticking, locking, grooves. They get tighter and tighter. Begin to shake. Begin to shake. Yes, and tight, 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 tight. In a few moments' time, I'm going to come and move some of you around a little bit. If I do, please keep just keep staring at your hands, listening to the sound of the music, the sound of my voice. Otherwise, you'll have to start all over again. I'm talking just to the young people on the shoulder. But keep staring at your hands. Tell us what you're doing. Alex, Alex, come over this way for me. Alex, I'm just there. You might be the star of the show. Are you ready? And just go into it from there. So I've never asked them to separate their hands. There will be people here if I said separate your hands, they'd go without any problems at all. Um, but I just don't give them that option. And then, as Alex said yesterday, he can separate hands. Anyway. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, but then, yeah, sorry, then. Yeah. And for, so they're all stood in a row, and I would then just do the fall back to him, say that bit about. Alex is now lying on the floor, feeling very relaxed. He just doesn't care. He can't still hear me, still hear the music, still hear the audience, doesn't care anymore. We're going to the next one. Which is real reality again. You're telling the audience one thing, but to them, they're hearing it as all I'm saying here. There, if they're lying there on the floor and they're going, I don't know, sorry, it's in their head, at least I've now told them that they're, they're, they're thinking what they're meant to be thinking. They're thinking, oh, yes, I can still hear him and all the rest of it. And occasionally you'll find with that, because they're kind of a bit nervous, sometimes you'll get a bit of a smile or a, smile or a laugh, as they, a giggle as they hit the floor, and their eyes can open uh, if, they come out, if they're not under it, they come out of it. In which case, I just dive onto them as quickly as possible without looking like Not me, Clint! <laughs> 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 no, 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 not like that. So I dive straight down as quickly as possible without looking back. And just like, hands on the face, yeah, over the eyes. Sleep, sleep, deep, deep. Yeah. So I'm just saying, keeping it off my Keeping your eyes tightly closed until I say otherwise, and move across, and it just looks like it looks like you've just added something. Like that's part of it. They've never seen this before. So sinking, relaxing, gently down deeper, and slowly. But you're asserting your dominance on that person, so you can do the authority figure. Can I just ask, when you go all over the floor, how what do you do to get them then onto the chairs? Right, this varies because Alex and I do something different yeah. from watching Alex's shows. Yeah. I've got, say, six people, I have many people in a row, and I'll try and slot them in as closely together as possible, like sardines and a tin. Yeah. So they're all lying down here on the floor. I do uh, the deep and the major post it, like, which I assume we're going to do after we've done it. So I won't go into too much detail on that. So you deepen them, give them the major post it, not it. From there, uh, I would then go along and just wake one of them up, sitting down on a chair. Once this person's here, yeah. I then put them back under. Grab the next part. So I just go in the order I think I'm most likely to go back on the quickest and, and fall all over the place and look, and look, look the best. Yeah. Uh, and position them in the order I want them in. And then uh, it saves moving around later. And then that's it. Um, and I think you get, you wake them all up first and then put them all back. Uh, and then, I, I, as a rule, yeah, I've waked them, them all up. Get them all together. I'll tell you why and I sit do. down and then, you know, everyone look at me, I see breath in and. Sleep, 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 sleep. And where they have to, and then the audience, oh, you just waved at them and they went on the door. It's a reinduction. I'll tell you my psychology and why I don't. Actually, I could do that, but I'll tell you why I haven't done that. I have seen hypnotists who, in the earlier days when I just started out, who, who wake them up, who they throw all on the floor, they all wake them up, they sit them all back down together, and then they go up to one and say, sleep, put him back on the go next one, say, sleep, put back on there. But I've also seen when they go up the first one, they've picked the wrong globe, they've gone to sleep, he hasn't gone back under and nothing appears to have happened. And five other people have just seen this bloke not go into trance. Which is why I'd be inclined, you know, everyone look at me, I'd see breath in, and sleep, 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 downward movement, left and right, so you clearly apply it to everyone. Those that are responsive are going to close their eyes, because you've told them before when they lay down them when you say sleep, that's what they're going to do. And the ones that don't, well, it doesn't matter, because the ones that would, they've already got their eyes closed. I, then, I saw a very well, well known, I won't name him, but a very well known in this country stage hypnotist fall foul of that. He did all the fallbacks, got them all to wake up. Uh, there were lots of volunteers, so he had to do some fallbacks into their seats as well, as well as onto the floor. But either way, walk them all up together. Everyone on stage, eyes open, wakey, wakey. Everyone take a seat, drag some extra seats in to, to get them all sat down. Everyone take a seat, and then he just went across to the first one and went, sleep, nothing happened. This guy sat there and he just sort of went. And he, he sort, of, sort of quite firmly whispered, oh, I don't like that. He then went, okay, just sit there. He said, sit off, Mike, just go sat in the front, just sit there for a second, I'll be with you in a second. He moves on to the next one, nothing happened to this geezer either. And I looked at the other people and thought they were quite blatantly under, but the negative psychology of just watching two people not go into trance has just knackered the show for him and he really struggled from there. I think you only get one of them. Um, so personally, I, I, if you do it Alex's way, it will work because at least the ones who don't go under can't see. But when you sat in there, 
Just yeah, you're stacking everything in your favour that way. I mean, I don't do this anymore anyway, so you'll find out later. Yeah. I think that's probably a good time to have a five minute break, but I mean literally five minutes, because we've then, after the break, got to get through about 20 inductions, so that when we have the proper final break of the day, prior to the final session, then we can get to the, really, the main induction, the only induction method that Rob uses, stage therapy or anything, and the main induction method that I now use for stage therapy, especially now that my back's getting worse. So, uh, five minutes to see you back in. So, right, I'm going to have to have a guinea pig. I'm trying to think of the best way of doing this, and that means it's going to be you. Yeah. <laughs> because if I use Rob, then it's going to save time on getting people up one by one. It's more about the physical thing. The key is, with any of these inductions, the key is that the more different things that are going on to them at one time, the more things they could focus on in their mind. E.g., if you put a finger on the head, they think, oh, he's got a finger on there. But if at the same second you touch them on the back, it's like they can't think of two things at once. So the more things that are going on, the more it becomes disorientating and confusing. And they start to attribute that to being the magic juju. So, we call this one, it's on the disc, don't shit yourself, I, I'm a professional. Um, <laughs> the falling forwards induction. I'd only ever do this after I'd done a drop back on somebody. So there's already, once you put one person out, dramatically say with the drop back, all the other inductions become progressively easier because of that belief being high. Well, falling forwards go something like, just come this way, sir, feet together. It's going to look incredibly similar in many regards to the falling backwards, but sort of opposite. Feet together, hands by your side, or it might be there to make them top heavy this way, but say it's hands by the side. Look directly into my eyes. You can do this with a microphone in hand, because even holding it there, the microphone will pick you up. That's something you've got to be aware of when you're practicing. Probably best to practice with a mic. Or you may consider getting a headset mic, so your hands are completely free. Okay, so feet together, hands by your side, look directly into my eyes, take a nice deep breath in, and out. I'm going to count backwards from three to one on the count one if you concentrate, as I'm sure you will, and use your powers of intelligence, imagination, and concentration effectively. You'll just feel yourself being gently pulled towards me. I won't let you fall and hurt yourself. I'll catch you and allow you to end for a lovely, relaxing stay. Three, drifting down, two, drifting down on one. Relax, sleep. Done much quicker normally, so it's lit. on stage it goes boom. All that's happening is the feet are together. You've still got the pivot, but it's in the other direction. You stand a little bit away from them in what I'd call this sort of ready to kneel position. The reason for this is because you're now going to outstretch your arms so that your fingers can touch the side of their temples. On Robert Temple! <laughs> but just sort of above the eyebrow line on the side. Yeah? There. So that then, with the lightest of pressure, that you can pull them. And it is the lightest of and pressure. I'm not going with that, that's just happening. If you put too much pressure on, they'll resist it. So it is really light. And that gentle movement, people will follow. So when your fingers come off, like, it's that movement in reverse almost, they're ready to fall forward. But you get them to stare into your eyes, and as you do those counts, you know they're gently moving towards you because you're gently doing that finger movement. But that means that their body's moving this way, so their eyes are naturally moving that way. And you've said stare in your eyes, so you've got to keep the eye level by kneeling down. So they're not consciously aware that they're becoming more off balance. This is one to really practice with a friend or with a mattress or something. <laughs> what, with a mattress? Yeah. With a mattress no, no, on the block. <laughs> so that it becomes three, two, and when you're getting ready for one, to let that finger come off, let this one come away and go straight under their arm here at the back. And then as this one comes off, straight under there, so they're now against your body, and then you can use their feet to pivot, turn them round, to lay them down like that. We're done in one smooth movement on stage. Stand up. <laughs> Brilliant. Obviously, we're not going to get you anyways. Come this way, feet together, brilliant, hands by your side, all that. Look into the eyes on the count from three to one on the count. One, if you concentrate, as I'm sure you will. Keep staring into the eyes and around the eyes, into the eyes. 
You'll find that you just feel yourself gently falling forwards. I won't let you fall and hurt yourself. I'll just lay you in a lovely, relaxing state. Three, two, one, and sleep. And I'd shout in the air, sleep, sleep, sleep. It scares the crap out of them, disorientation, confusion. That is essentially the falling forwards induction. Craig Williams microphone induction. Ideal for, ideally when they've done the locked hands, so you're in the locked hands position, but we're not going to tell them that they're going to separate the hands. So you bring them forward, that's brilliant. Again, this is one for when you've already done an induction. You stand them there. Again, you've got the feet together a bit. You've already got the advantage that the position their hands in a lot, that if you get their wrist and really sort of put your thumb onto their wrist and your fingers spread out so you've got a real good firm hold of them, you've now got something to stop them falling over. But when you want them to, you've got something to stop them banging their head. Okay? And you get them to stare at the microphone. You say, I'm going to count from three to one. On the count of one, when the microphone taps you on the head lightly, you'll just fall backwards. I won't let you fall and hurt yourself. You just close your eyes, blah, blah, blah. Deeper you go, better you feel. All those standard phrases that are in the book and on there. And the idea is that you've got the head looking at a 45 degree angle, which is straining their eyes anyway. As you count backwards from three, the deeper you go, the better you feel. Two and so on. If you're counting back the numbers, you're bringing the pen in slightly so they're getting bog-eyed, cross-eyed, and you're also slightly moving it back further above their head so they have to lean their head back. So when it comes to the touch, they're already at a point where they're going to fall. I can do it. I know it's going to knock me back. Well, all right. So, <laughs> look at that. Three, two, one, and they go to there. And if you want them on your touch, and come in and get their other wrist. He's stopping himself on purpose, obviously. Um, that is quite simply the Craig Williams microphone induction. Peter Powers, all of these at the end of the day, you say the same old winky wanky phrases. I'll count backwards from three down to one on the count of one. If your eyes are not already closed, they will instantly close. You have your head falls forward onto your chest. You keep your eyes tightly closed at all times unless I say otherwise. And then as you're counting the numbers backwards and doing the physical movements, come out with bits like, you know, the deeper you go, the better you feel, the better you feel, the deeper you go. It's all the standard crappy phrases we went through before. That's why they keep coming up so often. Peter Powers rubber and legs induction, so cold because Peter Powers, as far as I know, came up with it. Again, it's one for the locked hands, and that is so everyone's got their hands locked, they're on stage, you might move them further forward so they're not going to hurt themselves too much. And they're there, and you're telling them that the tighter they get, the more they'll shake, and you're really ramping this up. You decide which of them have clearly shaking most, and you go up to them and you say, okay, just look at me, keeping your hands together. Take your right foot and put it against your left like that, and you get flat on the floor, really, and you get everyone stood like that. Now immediately he's off balance because his hands are shaking, and you say, I'm talking to everyone on the stage. I'm going to count from three to one on the count of one. By then, if your legs have not already turned to jelly, the very moment I tap you gently on the back, the very moment I tap you gently on the back, you'll just fall to the floor. And literally, he's shitting himself now. You know what I mean? <laughs> literally, I'm not advising to do this, but it's a lot safer than it looks. Most people will lose their balance, and ultimately what will happen is, is they lose their balance if their back leg, yeah, you can undo for a minute, their back leg will push forward on the front leg, pushing them down to the floor, and then they'll fall to the side, which is sort of parachuting. It's it's it looks bloody good, it is dangerous, I'm telling you, so I wouldn't advise using it. I have been known to, low occasionally. If by the time you're getting close to the count of one, because you're talking to everyone, the suggestion of your legs are turning to rubber like jelly, you're shaking, hasn't happened. They're expecting you to tap them on the back. Well, yeah, you go up and you tap them gently on the back, but you just gently, using your knee, gently tap in on the back of his knee, which is going to push that knee forward onto that knee. He can't do anything but fucking go forward onto his knee and down to the floor like a sack of shit. And it looks like they go, bang! And the moment the first one goes, that verbal suggestion sets off everyone else falling like sacks of spud. You'll be amazed, actually, when you do this, because I've used it a couple But it's times. way safer than it looks. It's still dangerous, so I don't suggest doing it. But it's a lot safer than it looks because actually what happens is it moves them forward down to their knees and they naturally fall over because of the weight. They're not going bang like it looks. The only place you will find they'll find pressure is on their ankles as they fall forward. Yeah. That's the only bit that's dodgy about it in my opinion. But you'll find you'll be amazed because people's hands stay together even when they fall into yeah. the floor. You expect people to sort of do that knowing that they haven't really stuck their hands together. They just think they have. But their hands do stay together. Yeah. Uh, world record high speed hypnosis technique. Uh, Peter Powers in 1988, I think it is, set a world record for high speed hypnosis. 
hypnotised 12 people in exactly 60 seconds. Since then, a guy called David Nye claims to have done 43 in 60 seconds. I've worked it out, and using this technique, I'm pretty damn certain if I could be asked, I could probably just about do 60 in 60 seconds. Uh, albeit it would require a, a wide enough stage for 60 people in a row. Uh, and it would require um, 60 compliant individuals, we'll say. Because bearing in mind all of these attempts, the suggestibility tests have already been done on these people. And arguably, the suggestibility test means that they're hypnotised or compliant. It's just that, for the terms of the record, it's perceived as it's when you say sleep to them. So you get, like, all the people, whether it's one, two, three, four, five, six, sixty of them. And that's why I've worked out, practising it quickly, you can do a person per second, I reckon. Because they take the timing from the moment you say sleep to the first individual. That doesn't mean you can do an half-hour progressive relaxation. It just means that, well, this will make sense. Everyone's on stage and you've got them all staring at a white bright spotlight out the front that's really going to blur their eyes. And you've got them stood there for a minute and you say, next person. So you get your next person in position. And then you go for your next person. So by the time you've lined up 60 people, or 12, person number one's had a long length of time staring at the white light. And so it goes on. Because you're going to hypnotise, apparently, person number one first. So by the time you get to person number two, they've had a bit longer, and so on. Make sense? Ultimately, all you're going to do, they're staring at that light, they've got their hands by the side, the feet together. You're going to say, I'm talking to everyone on the stage, we're going to start the record attempt now. Basically, in a few moments' time, the music's going to begin. The very moment I tap you on the head, the very moment I tap you on the head, you'll fall back into my arms, your eyes will close, and you'll drop backwards. I won't let you fall and hurt yourself which is actually a lie. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do on Rob, I'm going to lay him down gently, but with the record, they do let him get so far and let go and drop. They're expecting you to tap them gently on the head while they're staring at this white bright light. What actually happens is this. I'll stare at the light, and you come across, and you go... And we're starting, the music starts, and you come across, and you go... Sleep! Right? Now, that was gentle in so much as I, I, I got him nearly to the floor. I knew what was coming in. If, <laughs> if, 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 if you allowed him, if you went like that, and you allowed him to get to that point there, about there, and then let go, and did the next one, because all you've got to do along the line is, you've done number one, but then you're in position for number two, number three, number four, number five. If you're really quick, and you're practically throwing like it's a health and safety nightmare, don't do it, then yeah, you could set a world record, probably through concussion, frankly. But, now some people say, well hang on, they tested the pulses and they dropped. We've told everyone that to breathe deeply in through the nose and out through the mouth. If you do that for long enough, your pulse drops anyway, you relax. It's feck all to do with having gone into a trance. Now sideways on, the feet are together, the hands are by the side, they're looking at the white lights, so they've got the 45 degree angle, they're already top heavy on the head, the lights there, they're expecting to be tapped on the head. But what actually happens is your hand comes over their head and suddenly over their eyes, so it goes from bright white spotlight to blackout, which they weren't expecting. At the exact same moment that you push their head back, you push gently in on the bottom of the back, which gives the arch, and you can basically let go at that point, and they're going to drop back and you lower them down. Oh, no. And there's so much, yeah, well, we're not <laughs> allowing you to, but you know, it's so much going on, and it does sort of scare the shit, it does shock them in. It's a shock induction. Um, can't be bothered with you induction. That is, the name sort of practically says it all. This is where several people are perhaps on the stage and you've already knocked one person out and you've got everyone else lined up in front of the chairs. So you've done person number one and everyone else is thinking, bloody hell, I could be next. And you walk along the line and you perhaps stop near this person and look at them. And then you go, no. And that, because they're thinking, shit, it's going to be me next. And then when you walk off, it's a sense of relief for somebody else. And you allow this to happen a couple of times. Oh, no, I'll have this person. Shock again. But sense of relief, it wasn't them. And then unexpectedly, you just walk past and you go, can't be bothered, he's asleep. And you just knock them back in the chair. Now, it looks very violent. <laughs> well, it, it is. Right? It looks way more violent than I'm it is. This, I'm going to stop now. <laughs> It looks violent, but it isn't. Jan, basically, he's not going over the face. He's not. 
the palm of your hand's going on the head and you're just pushing them down into the chair. But you do it in one movement as you go, you literally just walk past looking as if to say, I can't be bothered with you, but as if to say, without saying it, like you're going to someone else and then you just suddenly turn and go, sleep, and knock them back in the, down into the chair. Comes as such a shock that as long as they've got that expectancy and they've seen other people go, they're, they're... I reckon you could do that with them seated, actually. You could. You could, ultimately. I just like it to look good. But yeah, you could. Ultimately, hopefully, you'll get the ideas we've run through this list that it doesn't really matter what the fuck you do. It's just that all of these have an element of so much going on that they can't concentrate on it all, so it really is disorientation and confusion and then an element of shock. I would say with that, actually, if you're going to go in with the bottom of your palm, you just want to make sure that you do get it there and not there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it can be dangerous, though. You go in there, you're going to have yeah. It could shock people to make sure they do with the door because might end up with the bloody hands. <laughs> right. Handshake induction when they've been done before. By being done before, I mean when you ascertain that the person's been hypnotised before, all you need to do, um, we'll put this sideways on so that everyone can see, but just sit there. All you need to do, they've said they've been hypnotised before, so was it a professional hypnotist like myself? Was. Fantastic. And um, what's your name? Rob. Nice to meet you, Rob. Is it okay if we use a really fast form of hypnosis here today? Right, nice deep breath in. And sleep, 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 deeper, 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 deeper. I'm sorry, you are, right? Um, because you know they've been done before, pretty much anything will put them under. Now, the truth is, when I had total balls of steel and really didn't give a fuck, and, well, to be honest, it was the time that I was addicted to cocaine, so I really didn't give a fuck, I used to do that on stage, cold on people, people who'd not been hypnotised before, and I'd not even done a suggestibility test. It was literally, good evening ladies and gentlemen, volunteers please, up they get. And I worked on the basis, and I still believe this now, it's just that I, I've, I've lost, I've lost, well I'm not taking cocaine anymore, let's put it that way, I've been clean for many years. But it, I figure that if it's advertised right, and they really believe, and you've got that real attitude enough, that you know, when they come up, take a seat everyone, brilliant, nice to meet you, what's your name? Rob. Look at me, nice deep breath in, and just sleep, 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 sleep that you will still be able to get them if you've got balls of steel. Because the last fucking thing they're expecting is you, when you say hello, to suddenly go, what's your name? Rob. Sleep, 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 sleep. It's the last fucking thing they expect. It's still a shock. It's still disorientation. There's some physical elements, because when I go in, I don't handshake him normally. I go in and my finger goes onto his wrist. That's bizarre in itself. So part of his head's going, what the fuck's this all about? And when I ask him his name, I'm holding his arm up, so he's slightly further up in it. That's an abnormal position. It says his name, and as I suddenly go sleep, I'm bringing his arm down towards his chest so that his elbow knocks the air out of his chest, and then tug him forward slightly like that as my hand goes onto the back and sort of make sure he stays forward. Sleep, 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 sleep. A few gentle tugs. I'm not pulling his arm out of the socket. In fact, I've got my hand there to stop that from happening. Okay, I've got my hand actually on this side to stop that from happening. We want smooth movement. Nice to meet you. What's your name? Rob. Rob. Sleep, 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 deep, 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 deep. And, you know, even doing that way, looking at them, suddenly you've got the name, for no apparent logical reason, you suddenly go quiet, taking that breath in yourself. And as you lift their arm up, they tend to take a breath in, which means as you bring their arm down and their elbow hits the chest, there's breath in there to be expelled, which is more of a shock as you do this. Yeah? But ideally, that works better on someone who's been hypnotised before. It's just the... Um, if you've got balls of steel, you can you get away with it. You leave them down, or do you say you want to put them back on? I'll leave them down. I'd leave them down. Mm. Uh, for a short while. Yeah. Stick someone else under them, perhaps go to the back to them. They're sat like this. Mm. It's, not, it's not that uncomfortable. Mm. Add. It's getting a bit warm. I'll just actually point out if I've got a row of volunteers who've just arrived on stage, I'm a bit of banner with them first. And then I then say, has anyone been hypnotised before that Alex said? And if they put their hand up, I'll do that before I do anything else. Before I do the suggestibility test with the others. Before I do anything. Because it just looks good and everyone else sort of goes. And then when they're sat like that throughout the whole suggestibility test and the induction, which as you'll find out in a little while isn't very long anyway, um, it just looks good. Um, and I will say again, pretty much all of these are on the MPEG movie that's on your bonus disc with this set. So you can see it from all the different angles uh, uh, as well. Or use the rewind function on these DVDs, obviously. Right. People have been hypnotised before. The hand wave instant. 
If you've got balls of steel, you could use this on someone who hasn't been hypnotised before. I don't suggest it, unless it is a stage environment where everything's really in your favour. But the idea of this is they've said they've been hypnotised before. Was it a professional hypnotist like myself? So you're anchoring it, they say yes. Like Jonathan Rowe, the man, the myth, the legend. Hypnotherapycourse.com. Buy your fan t-shirts. Um, and then burn them on the streets, because you're all illegal street hypnotists and you hate me. Um, so you've established that, you've got the anchor. And uh, you say, cool, can we use a really quick form of hypnosis then tonight to get you back into that lovely state? Because you know that when you hypnotise, your eyes close, your heavy head falls forward onto your chest. Would that be okay with you? Yeah. Once you've got consent, they're pretty much saying that yes, they'll react correctly. And I, you might notice some, uh, something relevant to this in a minute. I, I put my hand out like that, and I say, stare at my fingers. Nice deep breath in. And follow my fingers at all times, and sleep. Which looks nice and dramatic. Now here's the thing, you've got to be careful not to whack them in the face. <laughs> but, I'm getting to stare at my fingers, so I've got the 45 degree angle eye strain going on a bit. It's also weird what the hell's going on, why? Making it clear, stare at my fingers at all times. When it comes to me saying sleep, I am not only moving my fingers down quickly as I say sleep, so his head's got to move in the natural direction of it's easier to rest it forward, but I'm also moving my hand inwards as it gets to, so it's from that angle to when it's almost flat and starting to move into that position, I now bring it in towards his face, but so that it goes past the side of this face. Take some practice. Try not to do it wrong, otherwise you'll be <laughs> you know. But what happens is that downward movement, not only does it bring the head down to the right position, but as you go, it's all right, open your eyes, as you go past their face, so it's sleep, it creates a draft going past their face, which is natural because your hands go past. But combined with the head being in that position, the sudden sleep being shouted, there's so much going on. Again, you've got that disorientation and confusion. What the fuck was that? You didn't even touch me. There's so much going on. Does that make sense? Yeah? Um, eyes glued together guaranteed. Feet on the floor, please. Squarely on the floor. Palms upturned on your lap so they're in a submissive body language position because you're the person of authority. Um, Tilt your head well back, close your eyes, take a nice deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth, in through your nose and out through your mouth. I'm going to place my fingertip on the centre of your head. When I do it won't bother you, worry you or concern you in any way. It's just a sign and a signal to relax more. Keeping your eyes tightly closed at all times unless I say otherwise. I want you to imagine there's a little hole in the top of your head and there's a white bright, you might recognise this as a suggestibility test, a white bright light coming in through your head. Keep staring at that point where you can feel my finger, where the hole is, where you imagine the white bright light, and you realise that on the count of three, the deeper you go, the better you feel, and the better you feel, the deeper you go. And it's on two, every nerve, fibre, tissue, or muscle in your body, from the tips of your toes to the tips of your fingers, because so limp, so loose, so relaxed, so heavy, and so tired. And on one, nice deep breath in. And just so long as you keep staring at that point, you notice that if you try to open your eyes, keep staring at that point, and you notice that if you try, they're just locked, glued, welded, cemented. Just try, stop trying, nice deep breath in, and just sleep, relax, drifting down, sinking down. That's what it looks like, nice and gentle. You may recognise the guaranteed eye closure from yesterday. It's made easier because you put your fingertip there and you're anchoring them where to look up with their eyeballs. Uh, but also, what I'm doing, this sounds mumbo jumbo ish, but I'm going to mention it anyway. I've got my fingertip on sort of the centre of their forehead where some delusional people would say the third eye is, the psychic third eye. Now, if you believe in this, apparently, if you, if you, if you turn, twist, sort of rub the skin in one direction, it opens the third eye. <laughs> and if you rub it in the other, and if you, if you rub it in the other, it closes it. And if you sort of rub it just in general, like that, a bit left to right, it causes confusion. Now, who am I to mock these people? I think, fuck it, if my finger's there, I may as well rub it gently side to side. Because if they're right for some reason and I'm wrong, that's going to create another level of um, confusion. 
You know, confused, mate. Yeah. Welcome to my world. Yeah. So, that's actually why you may have noticed my finger going a bit like that. <laughs> I just thought, fuck it, everything stacked in my favour, just in case. Just in case. And then, we're making sure, you know, try and open your eyes in that position. We only let them for a split second, so it's even less likely. And then we go, stop trying, nice deep breath in, because we want the air forced out of the chest as we gently rotate the head to the side, down and round, and say, sleep. And gently pat them on the back, like reassurance. It's one smooth, nice movement. But there's still lots going on. So there's too much for them to compute consciously, so there's disorientation and confusion. Make sense? Yeah? Cool? You'll be sick. Hopefully by now you're spotting a lot of similarities between these. Albeit they look very different to the public, they're essentially work for the same reasons. Eyes glued together, Almond method. Close your eyes. Brilliant. Take a nice deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. I'm going to count backwards from three down to one. On the count of one, if you concentrate, as I'm sure you will, and use your powers of intelligence, imagination, and concentration to avoid looking like a dickhead who hasn't done what I've said. No, that you don't say that to them. But that is what really the, the reasons for the phrases we said. You'll find that your eyes are locked, glued, welded, cemented in place. Now you're fully in control of this. It won't bother you, worry you, or concern you in any way. It's just a sign and a signal of how wonderfully you're using your powers of mind to access your super subconscious. I made that up. Uh, your super subconscious in a way that feels right for you. So on three, every nerve fibre tissue or muscle in your body from the tips of your toes to the tips of your fingers becoming so limp, so loose, so relaxed, so heavy and so tired. In fact, it's almost as if all the little muscles around your eyes, it's almost as if all the energy, all the power to them has been switched off. As on two, you imagine in your mind's eye, it's almost as if you have turned off the control panel that controls the little muscles around your eyes and your eyelids. And on one, in a few months' time, when and only when, you know yourself, you know for certain that you've turned off all the little muscles in your eyes. When and only when, you know, just prove to yourself that you've done that correctly. And now, just relax, nice deep breath in, let your heavy head of a fall forward, and sleep. Okay, open your eyes, wake you, wake you. That's it. That is the Dave Alman eye closure induction. But if you break down the wording, the idea is that means they're suggestible. So they've gone under. No, what it means is they are cooperative and um, responsive. Because if you break down what's been said, when and only when you know for certain that you have turned off the control panel that controls... All the emphasis is on them. If they open their eyes, it's not your fault. You can literally just say, close your eyes again, take a few moments to find the control panel, turn off all the power to the little muscles around your eyes. When you've done that, nod your head, brilliant, now just try, prove to yourself, not to me, there's no challenge, prove to yourself, that's fantastic, ego praising, when you see them going a bit shaky, and then go, stop trying now, just take a nice deep breath in, and then tap the head forward as you say, and relax, sleep, drifting down. That's it, that's an induction. The next step would be the demon. Quick, simple, Safe, gentle. Does that make sense? Does it make sense why it works as well, or more importantly? It's got feckle to do with hypnosis. The onus is psychologically on them not to look a dick and to prove something to themselves and have achieved something. Well, at least it is in my opinion. Oh, yeah, sorry, the hand wave before. The hand wave. Well, we'll do the finger stair first. Very similar to the hand wave, but it only uses one finger. <laughs> hey! the budget version. Imagine you've got somebody sat there and you take your finger and you say, stare directly at my finger and it's a bit slower than the hand wave. This can be used on someone who's not been hypnotised before. So stare directly at the tip of my finger, that one there. I'm going to count backwards from three down to one on the count of one if you concentrate, as I'm sure you will. You'll find that your eyes are closed and you keep your eyes tightly closed at all times unless I say otherwise. Three. With every breath that you take, every noise that you hear, every word that I say, and every thought that you think, merely a sign and a signal for every nerve, fibre, and tissue, and muscle around your eyes to become so heavy and so tired. Two, allowing your heavy head to fall forward. And one, just sleep, 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 sleep. I remain tightly closed at all times unless I say otherwise. I always follow up by saying that, just in case they were thinking of opening their eyes. 
you're asserting your dominance again. Uh, this clicky bit, by the way, I do add sometimes at the end, so it's there, and I'll suddenly go, sleep, sleep, and I'll just click from one side to the other, from back, because the noise keeps changing direction, it's a bit more confusing and it's all you can take. That's all that's about. Um, all that's happening there is 45 degree angle, bit of eye fixture, the fingers coming in with the count backwards, so we're getting a bit of crossed eyes, uh, eye strain, and also that's three, so by about two, to keep following this finger, he's got to move his head forward so that by one, his head's got to be in that position that it's just a gentle tap and it's easier to close the eyes down. Now, if we combine that, which I've been doing for the past 20 years, uh, and Delavar showed me, and the hand wave, which again Delavar showed me, uh, and uh, referred to in his books that he wrote in the 50s, and um, there's an induction out there called the butterfly induction by a guy called John Saborn. And apparently this is like the super fastest induction on the planet. Well, I think the fastest is actually just going up to someone and saying, sleep! And if you've got the right environment, it'll work. But that's different. And what, what, what the butterfly is, and the only reason I'm showing you this, because technically I shouldn't, if it was original. Because then it wouldn't copyright wouldn't really allow me to, or perhaps it would for fair usage of educational purposes, but sadly it's not. Um, the idea is that you get your fingertips sort of in line with the eyes, and you go, stare at my fingertips, sleep, that's, by the way, is that, is that about right? No. I, I, that, do you want to, as you recall it from the speed transam now, we went to their event. But the point is, you'll see why this is in no way original. Um, the, way, the way John taught it is, obviously most people sat with their hands on their lap. Uh, you pick this oh, one. Oh yeah, he, he one likes up, to. Yeah. this one up yeah. and make it, <laughs> and make it uh, loose, and, <laughs> loose and limp and relaxed. Knock this hand off. Uh, and if it, if it does that, it's going to be hard here because it's got an arm. But you just knock it off. Obviously, if this wasn't here, there's one of these, you know, it, just, it would just be down vertically parallel with this side. You take this one, you say, follow my fingers, and um, the movement is four fingers, three would be something else, four fingers, get them to follow it like this, and the movement is, uh, if, you imagine a, if you imagine a T, a T but upside down, yeah? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so the movement is going to be uh, side to side, and up and down, and side to side, and up and down, and side to side, and up and down, and side to side, and up and down. So, it's side to side, up and down, side to side, up and down, apparently. Side to, I, I mean, I, if you did that, I think it would just as well. I've only used the induction a couple of times. Side to side, up and down, side and side, up to down, side to side, up and down. So, with this hand here, uh, which is more or less just for the drama of what's about to happen, side to side, up and down, side to side, up and down, and it is kind of, you can see it blinking and it's hard. Yeah, because it makes you side blink. Up and down, side yeah. to side, up and down, side to side, up and down, and just randomly in the middle of it, obviously not saying side to side, up and down. So you're just doing this, watch my fingers, follow my fingers with your eyes and with your head, follow my fingers with your eyes and with your head, follow my fingers with your eyes and your head, and sleep. And you use this hand to pull them forward so that they get into what I call the fold the door. Oh, you mean, you mean a bit like, um, have you been in the times before? What's your name, Robert, yeah? yeah. Nasty deep breath in and a bit like that, sleep, 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 sleep. <laughs> Oh, and a bit like that, or that, or fucking... Any of them. <laughs> There's nothing new. Don't fall into the trap when you walk these DVDs or leave this seminar. Except for at Seesaw, but you're going to learn that anyway. Don't fall into the trap of someone's brought out this super fast fucking induction. I need to buy the DVDs. No, you don't. There's nothing new. All these are fucking saying. Since the dawn of man, when Mesmer went, close your eyes, electrical man. It's the same fucking thing. People might combine two together and give it a name so they can sell a DVD, but it's not new. That's really a lesson that you, you, you want to take away from this. You now know how to hypnotise people, but we're going to show you the rest, not the same. The arm spin induction. Okay, they sat their feet together. Maybe if we're just moving slightly further forward, I'm just thinking about this being more visual for the cameras. And if they've done the locked hands, you could go straight to it from there. Otherwise, I get them to put the hands together like that, but a bit loose. If, the, if it was locked hands, I'd just say, you can separate your hands, one, two, three. Ah, but just put them back together, but they're back to normal now, that's fantastic. So they're in that position anyway. 
and this is what it looks like. Okay, I'm going to just take hold of your wrist, is that okay? Brilliant. What's going to happen here is close your eyes, take a nice deep breath in, and out. In, and out. In, and out. And I'm going to count from three to one. On the count of one, if you concentrate, as I'm sure you will, you'll find that your eyes remain tightly closed at all times. The heavy head will fall forward onto your chest, and you'll enter a lovely relaxing state. Three. The deeper you go, the better you feel. And the better you feel, the deeper you go with every breath that you take. Every noise that you hear. Every word that I say. Two, drifting down, sinking down. And one, just slip, 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 slip. Drifting down, sinking down. Okay, so. Similar same end result, sort of fetal position, which is naturally apparently relaxing anyway. We've got the hands together. Breathe in, arms go up. And I time it so that I'm making a circular rhythmic motion so that, as I say, in out, their arms are down. And as you time this with their breathing, you can actually, part way through, slow down the rotation and it will slow down their breathing. They will follow suit. Pacing and leading, they call it in an LP wank. And you time it with your numbers and your bollocks. Their eyes are already closed. You've told them they'll remain closed. And when you're ready for it, you make sure they've took a breath in and you suddenly, unexpectedly, just pull their hands apart and forwards at the same time and hand onto there to stop them falling off the chair and also to reassure them. That's it. That is the arm spin induction. So there's still loads going on and they're thinking, what the hell's going on? And it looks quite dramatic. The body flop induction or reverse arm spin for, well, no, it's not reverse arm. It's the same end result, but He's not going to work too well with these chairs, but it can be done with these chairs, so we're going to do it that way. Feet together, palms upturned on your lap. This is for two reasons. A, because of the complaints, submissive thing, and B, it's easier to knock their hands off the lap. Because we've got arms on the chair, that's not going to be as effective in this position. There was no arms on it that dropped down when I pushed them off. But I say, brilliant, I'm talking to you. Just tilt your head back, close your eyes, take a nice deep breath in through your nose. Then out through your mouth, in through your nose, and out through your mouth. I'm going to count from three to one on the count of one. Your eyes will remain tightly closed at all times unless I say otherwise, and you'll find that every noise you hear just serves as a sign and a signal to help you relax more completely. Three, the deeper you go, the better you feel. And the better you feel, the deeper you go with every breath that you take, every noise that you hear, every word that I say. Two, drifting down and sinking. Drifting down and sinking down. Drifting down and sinking down. And one just sleep, 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 deeper, deeper, deeper. They end up in the same position as the other thing. It looks different to an audience. Essentially, you've still got that pace and a leading bit with the breathing. You may have noticed the shoulders in and out. In, and then when I say drifting down, I start to do a bit of a gentle rocking motion, which is rhythmic. And then unexpectedly, they're used to feeling my hands on their shoulders, but unexpectedly they vanish. And the next thing they know, they feel their hands being knocked off their lap. But at the exact same time, because I've leaned forward, I can use my shoulder here to push their body forward, and my arms are already in position to stop them falling off the chair and pat them on the back and go deeper, deeper, deeper. So it is actually safe and gentle, but much dramatic. Does that make sense? Yeah? Um, I can't believe how well we're doing on getting through these uh, in induction techniques. This is brilliant. Plenty of time for the seesaw. Well, yeah. Um, I, just for completeness, I, I wrote down Sydney Flowers Dell's Blink Method. I've done this because there's a great history of hypnotists coming up with great new ideas, apparently, claiming them as their own. And then, if you do enough research, you actually see that the young's old. Um, now, Delabar in his book, which you've got on the disc, says the Delabar Blink Method. And this is to have every, all the subjects lying, you know, sat on the stage, staring at a white spotlight, and that you're going to count backwards or upwards. In his book, he says upwards. I suppose with this one, ironically, it's easier for them, for them to follow. The one only time I've tried it, I've counted backwards, because in my book, if they lose track of the counting, 
they'll start again, they get more confused and they might just give up and say, fuck it, I'll close my eyes and do what he says. Personally, that's what I feel. So, 45 degree angle with the old neck, looking up at the light, you've got the eye strain with the light, and he says, this is the Delamar way. On one, I want you to close your eyes. On two, you'll open them. On three, you'll close them. Four, you'll open them, and so on. So one number, you open them on. And he just keeps doing that as he keeps in, interweaving it with four, open, relaxing more. Five, close. And ultimately, it just confuses them. Knack is their eyes, and it's even more just like, bright, dark, bright, dark. And he says their eyelids are getting tired. Well, they will be after a while. But it, it can take 10, 15 minutes to get somebody under that way. Or rather, to get them to the point where they choose to just keep the fucking eyes closed. That's what we need to do. We need to start the new craze, don't we? We need to start the new craze. We'll call them, uh, instead of rapid inductions, we'll start the new craze of, you know, looking boring, awful, long, drawn out inductions and stuff. <coughs> That's a lot of stage hypnosis, isn't it? Yeah, true. Yeah. Um, which ultimately is the same thing as a light stare induction that you might see in conventional therapy books, staring at the light at the point on the ceiling. It's just about knackering their eyes up so they start to feel, oh, my eyes are getting tired, I may as well close them. That must mean I'm hypnotised. Well, why not make them feel something else, genuine, but more quicker and rapidly that they come to decide means they're being hypnotised? Um, Oh, I love this one. Guaranteed locked hands over the face. This is the one I used on Granada's Talk of the Town, as you'll see on the footage that's on the dish you take away. Uh, the place where I uh, used the £50 for it. <laughs> so, hands together, you know the drill. Left to right, right to left, away from you, above your head. Towards the sky, towards the rainbow, you already know the guaranteed locked hands test. The only difference with this is that we ask them to try to separate them, and keep pushing high towards the sky, towards the rainbow. And then we say, stop trying, and the moment we say that, we keep hold of their hands, but pushing them up in the air so that they can't bloody suddenly pull them apart. And we say, keep staring at your back of your hands. I'm going to count from three to one on the count of one if you concentrate, as I'm sure you will. You'll find that your eyes, if they're not already closed, will close down and remain closed at all times unless I say otherwise. Three, and you go through all your waffle, but the physical movement is that with your count backwards, you gently, as they're staring at the hands, compliance, please, you <laughs> gently move your hands, or ra rather their hands, as so, down in front of their face, so they have to follow the back of their hand with their eyes, so that when you get to the count of one, they're down here at this point, and then you can just sort of pull the hands apart and gently tug and go sleep and bring your hand up to stop them falling and reassure them. That's essentially it, but because you capture that moment of, oh my god, my hands are stuck, and you immediately go, stop trying, and just look at the back of your hands and drink, and it's all that smooth movement. There's so much going on, they can't think, it overwhelms them, it confuses them, it disorientates them. Make sense? Yeah? Uh, <laughs> okay. yeah. Tom Bolton, 60 second induction. How long does that take? Who's is it? In the rounds of 60 seconds. Um, actually, it probably takes longer than 60 seconds in therapy, but stay, it varies. That's just what it's called. Or the calm induction, as he calls it. Andrew Newton likes to call it the Andrew Newton. <laughs> but there again, he was at Tom Bolton's seminar and stole the idea and published it in the book as his own work. But there you go. Um, what this is about is that someone who may not, this is, you know, it doesn't matter how noisy it is, someone who doesn't know anything about hypnosis. It's about, oh, well, I suppose Anthony Jackery might have appropriated this in some regard because he has what he calls a rehearsal induction where he rehearses with them what's going to take place. It may not be the same physical movements that Auntie Jacqueline uses, but the principle of talking them through what they're going to do and having them feel it, rate it on a scale of 0 to 10 and then bloody do it again, only that time leave them hypnotised, uh, is as old as the hills. Uh, there's, no, there's nothing fucking new. Um, I'm not claiming originality for any of this, by the way. Um, I, I learned pretty much all of this by Delabarro, in this case, obviously, Tom Bolton. Um, I'm not certain. I've not been able to find a book yet that's got that uh, arm spin or body flopping. 
Uh, I'm sure there will be out there somewhere. I'm fucked if I know where I came up with them from, or rather, modelled them from. I, I don't know, otherwise I'd give credit. But the rest of mainly I learnt off Della observing the people involved. Um, right, so which, which one were we on? Tom Bolton sits a second induction gap sign in the chair. He's saying, in fact, can you sit just a little bit further forward in the chair? Just so you can lean back and make yourself as comfortable as possible. That's brilliant. Legs slightly out. And just, and you physically do move them. You say, in fact, just put your ankles up, lift your feet up slightly, lean. Yeah, no. So you can put your feet down flat. Put your feet flat, but lift them up. I know it's slightly uncomfortable, but just leave them there for now. That's brilliant. Hands on your lap. That's brilliant. Tilt your head back. That's brilliant. Close your eyes. Take a nice deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. We're just going to have a rehearsal. I'm not hypnotising you. I just want you to feel the nature of that relaxation in your body, how quickly it can happen from the tips of your toes to the tips of your fingers. Now, what's going to happen here is, quite simply, we're going to move different areas of your body, and this is how it's going to work. Take a nice deep breath in, and out. Keep your eyes tightly closed at all times, unless I say otherwise, but just let your head fall forward. Let your hands fall onto your lap. Allow that sensation to drift down and then just allow your feet to flop onto the floor and relieve all that tension. And notice how much better that feels that very moment, that second. And then just open your eyes. On a scale of zero to ten, with zero being no, uh, you know, zero being like stressed to hell, terrible, and ten being total relaxation compared to what it was before when you came up, um, how much higher up would you say it was? Nine. Nah. Pretty relaxed, but this time we want to go even further, don't we? Future bed. I should have done the number on them before, but fuck it. Get the idea. And then you're getting back. All right, feet back up like that on your ankles. Hands on your lap. Tilt your head well back. Close your eyes. Nice deep breath. And this time, you just waffle a bit, say three to one, and you just come across. Nice deep breath in, keeping your eyes closed. Allow the head to relax more than before. Arms loose limp more than before. And just allow the feet to go. And if you want, at that point, you can go deeper, deeper, deeper. Deeper. That's it. You're just putting the body into a stress position. Neck back hurts. Funny position. It's unnatural. And out slightly and the feet up means that the feet start to hurt. So you get the gentle rotation, relax, and then the total stress is off the feet. And because you've told them that means strands, they believe it. So it looks nice and smooth and, and, and uh, gentle. It's described far better, actually, as all of them are on, on, on the other disc. I mean in more detail. Frankly, if you're paying attention by now, you should be ahead of me when I start doing these. You should be thinking, oh, yeah, I know what he's doing there. Um, Gerald Klein, eight-word induction. It's a marketing blog, just call it eight-word induction. <laughs> but it's essentially... I can never remember the eight words, so... Place your hand here. Push down hard, real hard. I've said, I've already said eight words. No, I've said, no, 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 you can do it in... You, push down real hard. Yeah, it's nine. He does it in eight. But I, I just naturally use more. But anyway, place your hand here. Push down. And sleep. Or push down real hard. Because they're not expecting you to suddenly when they're pushing down real hard to let go, which means they're naturally going to fall forward and you're just going down, sleep, sleep, sleep. That's it. It's just shock, unexpected. But someone decided to count out a few words that could do it in a call, call it um, the eight-word induction. Uh, can, can, we, can we do it less? Hand here, push down, sleep. Five-word induction, right? No, 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 no. Let's try. Hand here, push down, sleep. Hand. No. Push. Sleep. Three word induction, oh, Royal. Can you, can you just put my hand on your hand? And then yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, we could go. Push. Sleep. Two word induction. Wait. <laughs> oh, you know. Yeah, oh, we could just go. Sleep. One word induction. <laughs> Fuck it. Do you get the point now? The point is, you all know how to do every induction method there is on the planet already. You do. This is all there is to it. So therefore, you already know how to create your own inductions. What do you do? Take a bit of that, a bit of that, so there's loads going on to confuse them, disorientate them, and overwhelm them. Um, Pardon? 
I'm just going to mention it briefly. Fingers closing shock arm pull. Last time. <laughs> I mentioned the fingers closing shock arm pull with a suggestibility test. You did fingers closing, and then suddenly, as the fingers come together, you just come in. So your palm sort of press the fingers together, grab the wrist and pull four wrists even, and pull forward as you go. Sleep, 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 sleep. But in that moment, it's shock. It's more unexpected. It's about taking control. The magnetic hand shock arm pull. Oh, right, this is the way I do it. Fuck what the book said. The book's way doesn't always work. This way it does. I take their arms, I take control and say, put your arms there. So they're in an unnatural 45 degree position. I'm slightly apart and I say, close your eyes and I let go. And I say, I want you to imagine now with each count backwards, not only are your arms starting to get heavier and moving towards your lap, but also on the palms of your hand, you imagine there are magnets attracting, pulling the palms of your hands together. And I waffle shit until something starts to happen. That something is either A, they're incredibly suggestible and they do that, in which case then I'll pull them forward, as I say, sleep. Or, more likely, their arms get knackered and start falling towards their lap. But because of the position that I put them in, as they do, they naturally come together and the hands end up touching. It might be that it happens near the lap and you've got to go in and go to sleep. But they feel the hands come together like you said they would, so they come to believe that what you said would happen, so it did. That way it works every time. It's just a matter of how long it takes for their arms to get knackered. <clears throat> Zap. God, there's a DVD out there called Zap by Hong Wong, who ironically learned, as I understand it, as, uh, yeah, as, I un as I understand it, he learned most of what he knew about hypnosis before he came up with his marketing plan from my stuff. There's testimonials on uh, magicalguru.com forward slash marketing from him saying how he's got my stuff and, and learned so much from it and I've got the originals on fire, so I can say that legally. Zap is not in any way, shape or form original, despite what they claim. Um, and Zap looks, and <laughs> you have to trust me with this, this is how it goes. From Zap time, meeting a complete stranger on the street, it goes something like, Hi, you're all right there. I'm Jonathan Rowan, nice to meet you. I'm a hypnotist and I hypnotise people. Would you like to uh, try have a bit of fun and give hypnosis a try? Oh, brilliant. Nice deep breath in. Sleep, 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 sleep. And actually, that wasn't Zap. Stand up. <laughs> that was me doing a normal handshake. Zap would be more, Hi, I'm uh, Jonathan Royal. I'm the world's fastest hypnotist. My son's daughter's family are relatives of the world's fastest hypnotist as well. Apparently, everyone he knows is, which is a bit weird. One of you has got to be the winner. Um... <laughs> I hypnotise people. Would you like to be hypnotised? Yeah, and he literally just, this is it, essentially. He's got older hand, and this is it. He goes, <laughs> That's essentially it. I'm taking the piss a little bit. Not really. But that is... <laughs> yeah. yeah. But bearing in mind that if you've got the, the, the... If you, as you pull their hand forward, also move that way, they're going down on the floor. That's it. He does say, in fairness, in the book that comes with the DVD, not on the DVD, but in the book it says, only do it on grassy or carpeted areas. What, like every stage you get? <laughs> Don't touch it with a barge pole. But the reason it works, why does it work? Shock. You built up the expectancy with those few words. It works for the exact same bloody reasons. Um, and just before the break, after the break, uh, we finish the induction section with Rob uh, sharing his technique. But just before, um, the number, come to that a bit. Um, just take a seat a minute, Rob, please. Uh, I'm getting a bit warm here. But, where are you, Nick? Yeah. Please. Give him a round of peer group pressures. Come on. Imagine I've not met you before, so it's a show. Yeah. I'm doing it sideways because for the cameras. But, you know. So uh, I go up to the volunteer on stage. Nice to meet you. What's your name? Nick. Whoa! Right, I'll stop you there just because. 
you know you were about to go then. And I don't want the tug on me back. Because this does give you a serious jerk on your arm here, which means that it goes across and matches your back up. But, if I was doing a show, I would occasionally do it. So, for this purpose of this, you want to stand behind him. If he was on stage, I would actually, when, when he ends up falling, I would actually, but well, Rob's there, so make sure you, I would actually, essentially, go with him, but because I've got his wrist, with that finger and that hand round, so I've got, I go in in a weird handshake. The V into the V, fingers clamp round, finger onto the pulse area, thumb on top. I, I can literally take his weight and lower him down as he's going. But he gives one hell of a jerk here. Giving you health and safety for yourselves here. But it looks bloody good. Now in terms of what you do, you go up to them, you get that weird handshake, finger there, and you've got to position yourself so your own elbow is against your side, and so that you're at a distance where their elbow is against their side. That's the weird position you've got to instantly get into. And then, the moment you've got the name from them, what's your name? Nick. You don't say a single word, you just stare directly at the bridge of their nose, so they think you're staring through them. You take a breath in yourself, and you hold it. And they tend to follow, and they think, hang on, I've stopped breathing, so is he. You're staring at them, but in this position, just by gently moving your body, and keeping your hand against their, it moves their arm against their body, and moves their body back, and they... And to the audience, it looks like you just ask them the name, go silent, and they go, doom. And you'll see demonstrations of that on the video, um, the video links that are uh, on, on, on the disc, which just literally walk up. Nice to meet you, what's your name, sir? Nick. Nick, nice to meet you, Nick. And obviously Rob was there, but otherwise I'd walk through following to take the brunt. Thank you, Nick. Cheers. Cheers, dude. Um, but that really will knock you back up. Be aware that it's quite a um, repetitive strain injury. It is a major risk for stage hypnotists. So you may prefer to use a gentle induction. The nature of which you will be learning in uh, after the break. And my watch says it's just approaching five to five. We've actually just covered beforehand 25 induction methods. And if you add on to the fact some of the suggestibility tests we did yesterday, you can add and say sleep at the end. I think it's safe to say you've got more than enough induction methods that you'll ever need for any situation, any time, any place, anywhere. Hopefully, more so the understanding of why they work so you can put your own together. Now, in that regard, I have never, in my opinion, been hypnotised because it doesn't exist, but I've never been disorientated or shocked enough that I would be in a state of mind where I'd feel compliant to do daft things, shall we say, other than that one. Except for once, when I was in Manchester, start of last year, at uh, Richard Nongard and uh, John Savorn's speed trance event, and met Rob in person for the first time. We'd, we knew of each other, but met in person for the first time. He said, I've come up with this idea. And uh, I've tried it out a few times on shows. What do you think? So I'm thinking, oh, the same old shit. I'm going to tell him which book it's in from years ago. And he starts doing it. And I go, like in every hand, right, whatever. So I'm just like, sort of, right, show me. And then I'll tell you how misguided you are. I then find myself getting up off the floor where I've come off the chair. Like, how the hell did I end up here? What the heck's going on? Thinking... If there was to be something called hypnosis, that's the closest or weirdest experience I have ever had. I still say that it was more down to shock, disorientation, confusion, uh, um, the fact that I ended up on the floor and stuff. But since then, I've used it numerous times. I've seen Rob use it. You'll see it on his birdcage DVD. It's just... And I'm sure that also John a bit later will recount his experience of using it. So there's nobody better to demonstrate this and teach it you, uh, which he's got a few variations as well, uh, than Mr. Robert Temple. So please welcome Mr. Robert Temple. <laughs> Thank you very much. A familiar face back on the, uh, back on the platform again. Um, I just
just want to take two minutes out just to give you a very quick background on myself and where this has come from, because I think the story about how this was, how this all came about, is particularly interesting, especially when you um, relate to what Alex said before about coming up with your own inductions. Um, as if you haven't heard of me, I have been a professional full-time hypnotist for six years now. In fact, almost seven, because I turned 23 in about two weeks' time. Um, I began learning hypnosis at the age of 14 through Alex's book and his DVDs. Um, and I came up through the routine entertainment as a magician doing magic. I came up through the, uh, the Young Magicians Club, which is like the junior version of the Magic Circle. I did their competitions such as the Young Magician of the Year and then kept going up. But through that, at, at the age of 14, I saw Paul McKenna on the telly, thought this is quite cool, maybe this is where I want to be, instead of doing the traditional top hat and tails type dove, actor, dove magic act I was doing at the time. And then when I was 14, I was browsing on eBay, which was all quite new to me at the time, and I stumbled across this set of DVDs and books and everything. I can't remember how much it was, but I pestered my parents to get it for me as a present. It arrived through the post. It wasn't from Alex, it was from somebody else selling them. Um, and it was two DVD, three DVDs and, uh, and a, a CD with everything, everything he's ever released on it. And I sort of worked through this stuff, um, really intent on learning hypnosis and learning it so I could do it at school, etc., etc., etc. Anyway, I spent about the next two years really devouring everything that I could find on hypnosis, or at least everything that was came in Alex's package of stuff. I went to as many hypnosis shows as I could find. If there were caravan parks around me, I heard they had hypnotists on, I would go. So I befriended the management of the caravan parks just so they would tell me when there were going to be hypnotists on. I went to the local pub, snuck in, went to see the show uh, of, of any touring hypnotist who came to the northeast. And through doing that, it means that I've managed to see most of the sort of busier professional working stage hypnotists in this country over the past few years. At the age of 16, I decided it was time to take this onto the road and do something a little bit more with it. So I walked to about 20 pubs around the Newcastle, Sunderland area where I was living uh, and said, can I come and do a free show for you? I'm a comedy hypnotist. I lied, I said I've just come back into the country and now I want, uh, that's why I'm doing a free show, bullshit, bullshit, but it, it seemed viable on paper. Uh, of those 20, 17 of them obviously thought it was a con and three of them said, said, yeah, okay, we'll come and do a free show. So I did a free show assuming that it's all right, if it's free it means they haven't paid me anything, it means that there's nothing wrong. Uh, if it does go well, it means I've got some experience. And if anybody starts out now, I suggest they do the same thing, do at least one for free just to get it. Now, a lot of people will disagree with that, but that's my advice. Um, it just means with magic, at least the tricks are generally going to work. Um, whereas with this, yeah, you know, there are a lot of hypnotists who start out on their first show, it doesn't work. Mine did, and I was fortunate with that. But a lot of people, um, they go out there, so at least the, the punter won't feel ripped off if you haven't charged them for it. Um, so then I started doing summer seasons abroad. So from the last seven, so from the last six going on seven years, Five of them I've spent the whole summer abroad in Corfu, Kos, uh, well more recently, the last two I was in Kos, we did Spain for a year. Um, and that meant that I got to do a lot of shows, and it meant that I got to hypnotise a lot of people. And that's why, and people don't believe me when I say it, but we've got sort of, it's, it's, as, prov it's as provable as it could be, that over the past seven years, that I've six going on seven years that I've done this, I have now done 1,500 live, over 1,500 live performances, which I work out just on pure maths alone to be over 10,000 hypnotised subjects at the volumes of people you get on stage and get hypnotised abroad. So with that in mind, it meant that having hypnotised a lot of people that are still a pretty young age, 23, it meant that I've managed to try a lot of things, which is why as Alex has run through these, pretty much all of them, with the exception of that one, I have done at some point in, in either in my show or in therapy session. The, the um, Tom Bolton 60 second induction, I've never seen before, so that's new to me. But apart from that, I've done most of the rest of them. And the way this came about was, I got into a point where I was pretty much always doing the falling back induction, the way that I did it on John, and the, the, with the hand clasp first, and then doing the uh, and then doing the fallback straight afterwards. And then what happened was, it was in Cos in 2008. It would have been the middle of the summer, probably July-ish. Uh, the season was very, very busy, and I was working at a bar in. We've still got the short video actually, uh, at a bar in a little resort called Kefalos, a big hotel and bar. Uh, there and it's got a big, well, a fairly sizable stage and a big open courtyard where people sit around tables and then a big, it's a really swish looking bar uh, and a big uh, sort of enclosed bar area as well. And what happened was I said, Can we get some volunteers? And all of these people came hauling up to the stage, and I mean, there was about I don't really remember 12, 13 at the, uh, 
probably-ish. And they were, so they were off the edge of the stage. So I had to put chairs on either side of this stage for them to, so this, the line would continue. So, because I don't like having two rows of chairs, or I know some hypnotists do it. So, um, the girl that was doing my, um, my sound at the time had seen the show lots and lots of times, had no particular hypnotic training at the time, uh, but had obviously just seen my show a lot. And she said to me, why don't you, I dare you to do something different. I was just about to go on stage, my introduction had just started, so there's a big dramatic music and the voiceover. And I was just stood at the side where she runs my sound, and she said, I dare you to do something different. And I said, what do you mean? She said, bear in mind, I've got about a minute till I'm on stage. She went, just do something totally different, take a risk. There's a couple of hundred people in here that you couldn't move. If it was in this country and, we had, and they had legal capacities, it would be illegally busy. And she said, just, just do something completely different, take a risk. So I said, okay. I thought, well, she's only ever seen me as a hypnotist, and she's only ever seen me do a locked hands and a fallback. And I thought, I could do any of these. Anything. I could just dig back into my repertoire, look back, think back to Alex's DVDs, and do anything that's on there. Or I could change the suggestibility test to any of the ones that we covered yesterday. So, what happened was I had all the volunteers on stage, I did everything as I normally would up to the point where they actually had a bit of banter, a bit of jokes, a bit of fun with the volunteers. I then said, well, I thought I'll do something different, and I'll do the seesaw induction instead. Sorry, I'll do, rather, I'll do the light and heavy hands test instead of the locked hands test. So she wouldn't have seen this before, she'd probably think I've come up with it. So I thought, well that's part one, I'll cheat. I'll just do something tried and tested that she thinks I've come up with on the spot. So that was cool. And then, I got to this point and I thought, shit, what do I do now? I've got 11 people who are, well, 11, 12, 13 people, they're all sat in a row, sort of in different degrees of, of, of light and heavy handedness. Um, and I thought, well I don't really know what to do now to get them into trance, bringing them Bringing them up and doing it, it just didn't feel very logical, and it wouldn't, and then it would have been the same as what I always do. And it didn't really seem to roll into any of these. And I thought, sod it, there's 11 people here, the audience have all, at least, the audience have been laughing and clapping and cheering all the way through anyway. These people are pretty much on my side. So if I just did something random, chances are that even if I, you know, two or three of them are definitely going to go under. Obviously, I like to work with six or six, eight kind of numbers. But if I, can keep, if I just do something random and see what occurs. And what happened, over a couple, it worked and we kept all of them as it happens. But what happened was it turned into the seesaw induction just by playing it, tweaking it, changing it a little bit. And I found it to be the lowest resistance induction I've ever used. As I say, the first time I ever did it, bear in mind, it wasn't an induction at the time, I just made, I just did something. And it kept every single one of the volunteers on stage for the entire show and got them very deep and it's quick as hell. So, let me have a think. If I could have a volunteer, just so I can demonstrate what I'm about to do. Nick, you have to go. Yeah. Have a seat. Lovely. So, I shall do it as if I was just doing it, and then I'll show you how it works within a context of a show, and why it's as, why it's as fast as it is. Uh, so, um, let's imagine that Nick is just uh, uh, you know, he's a client, or he's just come round and he wants me to hit and this is what I'd say. First of all, if you put your knees in just a little bit, put your feet flat on the floor, that's lovely. Now, Nick, what I'm going to do, I'm going to count from one to three. On the count of one, I'd like you to place your hands out in front of you like this. On the count of two, I'd like you to turn your left hand palm up. And on the count of three, I'd like you to close your eyes. From there, just listen to what I have to say, and everything will be fine. My voice will relax you down. You'll be able to enjoy that lovely, relaxing state that we call hypnosis. Is that all right? Yeah, fantastic. Excellent. If you tip your head back for me, stare directly over the white bright light up there. Take a nice deep breath in. And let it out. Good, just keep breathing in deeply and regularly. And as you breathe in deeply and regularly, right now on the count of one, place your hands flat out in front of you for me. Do that right now. Excellent. Take another nice deep breath in through your nose. Hold it for just a second, then let it out gently through your mouth. Wonderful. Take another nice deep breath in through your nose. And let it out gently through your mouth. Fantastic. Right now on the count of two, take your left hand, turn it palm up. Wonderful. Take another nice deep breath in. And let it out. Wonderful. Take another nice deep breath in. And let it out. And now on three, just close your eyes. Close your eyes down tight. Listen to the sound of my voice and the sound of the music that would ordinarily be playing if we were in the context of a real show. Keep your eyes tightly closed for me, Nick, as you listen to the sound of my voice right now. I'd like you to imagine, I'd like you to just to pretend that on the palm of your left hand, I'm going to place a very heavy pile of leather-bound library books. These library books are going to get heavier and heavier and heavier, and they're going to slowly start to push your left hand gently down. So with every second that passes by, every click of my fingers that you hear, every noise that you hear, everything that goes on around you, just forces this left hand to get heavier and heavier, drifting and sinking gently down as it gets lower and lower. 
are heavier and heavier. At the same time, I'd like you to imagine around the middle finger of your right hand, I'm going to tie a bunch of bright red helium balloons. Now, these balloons are bright red and full of helium. They're going to start to pull that right hand up, rising and lifting into the air, lifting and rising, rising and lifting up higher, lifting and rising higher and higher into the air. As your left hand continues to get heavier and heavier, placing more and more of those heavy leather-bound library books onto that hand every second that passes by. As that right hand just rises, lifting higher and higher right now. In the next few moments' time, I'm going to come round and touch you on the back of the hands. The very second, Nick, that you feel me touch you on the back of the hands, it'll simply serve as a sign and a signal to relax. Your heavy hands, your heavy arms will drop down into your lap or to one side. Your eyes will remain tightly closed and your heavy head will fall forward onto your chest or to one side, whatever feels most comfortable to you. Once again, the very second I touch you on the back of the hands, I'll command the word sleep. Your arms will drop down into your lap, your heavy head will fall forward or to one side, whatever feels most comfortable for you. Your eyes will remain tightly closed. As your left hand gets heavier, your right hand gets lighter, so take a nice deep breath in and just sleep. Relax, I'll drop your hand down deep and sinking and relaxing down now. Eyes open, wide awake. Okay. Do you want to just say how it feels, actually, to have it done? Because I know you mentioned somebody had done it to you earlier. Yeah, you actually? yeah. It's, it's quite disorientating. It's because uh, obviously I'm, I'm quite aware of that one, but having it reversed is really, really odd because your arms go quite stiff, and then when they go the other one, you sort of your head spins a bit. And it just Considering he's not moving very far. Now, when I did it to Alex for the first time, which is the first time I'd ever done it to a hypnotist, although I had started, I, I was now doing it in pretty much pretty much every show after I'd noticed I must be onto something in cost. Um, I did this on Alex January 2009, yeah, January 2009, as he mentioned at the Speed Transit event in Manchester. Um, what happened is he ended up on the floor. Um, I, I think I just caught his hand a little bit too much, and it, it, he really went for it. And it doesn't happen very often in a show because I, I've got, I've now got measures, it measures in place to prevent that from happening. So it's not as violent as some of the others, but it still has this sort of element of disorientation. Now to show you what happens, I don't need to go through the light and heavy hands test because Alex did it yesterday, and it's pretty, much, it's pretty obvious really. Left hand out, palm up to get the books on, and because then this will get tired, it will sink. Right hand out and, and rising, blah blah blah. So. If you pop your hands out again for me, and we'll imagine that they've, they've moved. Now, obviously, sometimes they will only have moved that far. Sometimes they'll only have moved that far. Now, the first thing is, and I'm a bit more uh, vigorant about this than Alex is, uh, a bit more obvious about it. Alex did briefly touch on this yesterday, but I'm a lot more obvious. If, if their hand isn't moving at all, or is barely moving, I've got no problem with saying, and, I, this, is, and this isn't an exaggeration, this is how I'll happily do it, and all, audiences don't bat an eyelid. Audiences just go with it. As those books get heavier and heavier on your left hand and those balloons get lighter and lighter on your right hand, I've just moved his hand up at least four or five inches. And I've got no problem with doing that because it's not, when you've got your eyes closed, you're not massively aware of what's going on. He knows I've moved his hand, but he probably doesn't think that I can push his hand down several inches just with a little nudge. So if the hands aren't moving at all, I'll, I'll resort to that. But generally, at least half will have moved about that far. Some of them will have moved about that far, and generally, whatever your belief, if you agree with Alex, and I, I agree with Alex about hypnosis being a bit. Um, so I, don't, I believe you're either, again, like Alex, cooperative or not cooperative, rather than, but I do find that they are generally more suggestible, if you believe in it, if their hands move further apart. So those are the fun people. Um, so yeah, so whatever their hands, let's say they're about there, what's gonna happen is, I'll run through the wordage in a minute, the verbiage in a minute, because that's quite important. But the movement itself is that this hand goes on, because I do exactly what I say I'm going to do. I'm going to touch you on the back of the hands. This hand goes on the back of these fingers, actually. These hand, these fingers go on the back of these fingers. Okay, so my fingers are pretty much just over his fingers or over the back of his palms. And as I do this, the movement is because he's got right hand up, right hand rising, left hand lower. I'm going to swap those hands over to here. And then I'm going to pull this one down and slightly across his body like this, which pulls him that way. Okay, so again, what's happening is the arms, the arms are being moved like a seesaw. Alex came up with the name, so all credit to Alex for the name. The hands swap over like a seesaw, and then this one comes down. Okay, they swap over like a seesaw. I'll get my arm out of your face in a minute. They swap over like a seesaw, and then this one comes down. Okay, now. That's pretty much it. The only other important thing to cover on the, on, on the actual movement itself is that it's a really light touch. I'm not pulling his hand. I've literally just got my hand there. A bit like with the, um, if you put your finger on their forehead for the fall back, that's all that's occurring. It's just a light sort of pull and the, the hand just does move because, because their arms are sort of stiff and tired anyway. So he's had his arm out longer than most people have now, but 
just sort of with a nudge, it just wants to go. So you don't need any force at all, it's just a, a gentle sort of flick. So, with their arms out, you've done the light and heavy hands test. That means you're going to have different people in different states of, of this, different degrees of movement. But that doesn't really matter uh, within the context of a state, well, in any context. But if we imagine you've got eight volunteers, eight participants spread out across the stage, and we're now going to, I'll just leave you pop up for a second, Nick, I'm just going to swap, turn the seat around so it's a bit straight, and there we go, have a seat there. Lovely. So, eight people put their hands out, and if you pop them out like this for me, it's lovely. They all close their eyes, because again, I'll run through the, the verbiage of it in a minute, but I count from one to three, they end up in this position with their eyes closed. I do the, the light and heavy hands test as normal, that book's getting heavier, hands getting lighter. They're all in different contexts. Now the induction itself means you can hypnotize eight people very, very quickly because the suggestibility test is, is half of the induction done. So you've done eight people, half of the induction together on eight people. Whereas normally with a fallback, the first few are a bit slower because you've got to bring, pull them forward. And you do that bit about in a few minutes time, you'll feel yourself sinking and falling gently, blah, blah, blah. blah. And you've got to do that pretty much on the first two or three and then the rest will go. With this, you can pretty much do it on one and then just follow suit. So this is how it works. Imagine we've got eight people, Nick's in the middle. Everyone on stage, as the left hand continues to get heavier and heavier, the right hand continues to get higher and higher. In the next few moments of time, this is the wording you want to try and remember, although obviously if you can watch it back at some point that would be helpful. In the next few moments of time, I'm going to come around and touch you on the back of the hands. And I actually do this so the audience can get a, a vague impression as to what's coming next. I'm going to come around and I'm going to touch you on the back of the hands. The very second you feel me touch you on the back of the hands and command the word sleep, that will instantly serve as a sign or a signal for your hands, your heavy hands and your heavy arms. Now I say the words heavy hands and heavy arms because in this, this suggestibility test more than any other, these arms are damn heavy and damn tired. More so than any other suggestibility test I've ever seen. So I say the words, your heavy hands, your heavy arms, and the, if, if they think it through on a conscious level, they'll go, yeah, my, my arms are heavy, my hands are tired, my arms are tired. So I say, as I sit in the front, um, I'm going to come around and touch you on the back of my hands. The very second you feel me touch you on the back of your hands, it will instantly serve as a sign or signal for your heavy arms to fall down into your lap or to one side. Obviously, with arms, they're not going to, with these arms on the chair, they're not going anywhere to the one side, they're just going to go on the lap. But it gives them a bit more flexibility if they've got armless chairs. So, the very second you feel me touch you on the back of the hands, it will instantly serve as a sign and a signal for your heavy hands, your heavy arms to drop forward onto your lap or to one side. Your eyes will remain tightly closed. I'm just telling them what to do. Your eyes will remain tightly closed and your heavy head will fall forward to one side. And I tell them twice. The second time I do it, I add in, the very second I touch you on the back of the hands and command the word sleep. And I only say I generally only say it the second time round, and I'll tell you I'll tell you why. This is my thinking on it. The first time I, I say something, so when I start the exact same spiel again, but this time add something in it. All of a sudden, yeah, you put your hands down for now. Uh, when I when I start the exact same spiel again, which starts with in a few moments time, I'm going to come round and touch you on the back of the hands. The very second I do, and command, and then I add in the word and command the word sleep. All of a sudden, if you hear the same thing once, and then somebody starts the same, exact same sentence, word for word, timing for timing, pause for pause, all over again, but then stick in an extra sentence, you notice it more. So, to, to, to word it from the start, but quicker, I would say, in the next few moments time, I'm going to come round and touch you on the back of the hands. The very second I do, you'll feel your heavy arms will fall down into, drop down into your lap. Your eyes will remain tightly closed, your heavy head will fall forward to one side. Once again, the very second I come round and touch you on the back of the hands and command the word sleep, it will instantly serve as a sign. I've just stuck that sentence in. And if you notice, it stands out more because you weren't expecting that, if you think back to what I said before. They're not memorising what I said the first time, but they'll definitely know that it's different. And it's sort of... So the fact that I've commanded the word sleep, you'll instantly drop into a deep hypnotic trance, is what I add on the end. And then I just come round and I do that exact movement. So remember, you're going to swap them over and pull their hands down. Now everybody, place your left hand out in front of you like this, palm up, your right hand and separate them like you've just been uh, very suggestible. And I'm going to show you exactly what I do, because we did this at the last seminar, and I think it makes a real difference to people feeling what I actually do, because it's not what people think. This is what I'm about to do. Once I've done it, you can just open your eyes and sort of set yourself back up. Again, once I've done it, just set yourself up and open your eyes again. And you can feel how light that is. I'm not dragging your hand around at all. 
because there's no need to. As I said, their arms have been there for a while. They are rigid and hard. And I, as I showed you on Nick before, I flick, well, uh, just a gentle flick or a nudge is enough to make the hand move. And you've now felt the movement. Left hand goes up at the same time as right hand goes down, and then this one goes across, and it really isn't any more complicated than that. But what happened was, as I say, in the context of the show where I came up with the damn thing, it was just a case of, she said to me, do something different, I dare you. I thought I could do any of these, but the easiest way is to just start with a different suggestibility test, which I did. I did this, she thought I'd invented it, because she'd never seen it before, so it got me over the first part of the challenge. And then, as far as I was concerned, I just went, shit, what can I do now that's going to get them from here into trance? And I thought, well, sod it, let's just do this and see what happens. If I keep a couple, all right, it's fair enough, I can do a show with them. And as it happens, we kept everybody on the stage and they went deep into trance and did everything imaginable. And that's all it is. But what's particularly nice about it, Alex will to remind me of this, because I can't remember, somewhere, probably on the third disc of the, because the, the Seesaw DVD was released over three discs. Yes. On disc three, there's a footage of me doing this, and bear in mind, I'll just, I'll just um, clarify the exact details of this. No, the disc they're taking away this weekend all comes with this particular DVD package. Right, it's got the, the street hypnosis footage of you doing it. Right, the bonus, disc, the bonus disc has footage of me doing this on, and imagine I've never met Nick, Nick, Nick before. I don't know who he is, he's not a hypnotist, he's a random. If I, appro I approached this random and said, uh, hi, I'm a hypnotist, blah, 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 and from the moment of meeting them, saying hello, to them being hypnotised and stuck to things and doing anything I wanted them to be. It was how long? Uh, 27 seconds? Was it 47? 37. 37. Somewhere between the two. Somewhere between 20 and 40 seconds. Having, and that includes, hello, I'm a hypnotist, can I hypnotise you? Place your left hand out, light and heavy hands test. They just very quickly went to hear and sleep and straight across. And I think that says it all. And I now use this for therapy. I, because it works. I don't prance about wasting the first half of the session doing a, doing a uh, progressive induction or anything. I just do that because it works and it's quick. And within two or three minutes of me starting the session, they can be hypnotized. The, the session proper, they can be hypnotized. Uh, I use it on stage because it means that you can have eight people and it's much quicker. It means I can be in routines. My, my, my opening talk is about 10 minutes, five minutes to get volunteers, five minutes to do the suggestibility test induction and deeper. It means I can be in routines within 20 minutes, which a lot of hypnotists that I've seen, because as I mentioned earlier, I've seen most of the people working in the UK when they've come to the North East type pubs, I've seen hypnotists take 40 minutes, 45 minutes, 50 minutes, I was like, you know, it's just not going to work. But this is much, much quicker, because you can do the first, the long bit of the induction is this, it's the suggestibility test, and you can do that on everybody at once. So now if you imagine, thank you Nick, actually you can take the seat now, thanks for that. It means that if everyone's now in a row, they're all in different levels of different uh, degrees of, of this. It's then just a case of saying that bit that I said, in a moment I'm going to come around and touch you on the back of the hand. So you say this to everybody. You don't have to do it individually. In a moment I'm going to come around and touch you on the back of the hand. The very second you feel me touch you on the back of the hand, it instantly serves as a sign of signal. Obviously I'm speeding this up because you've heard it several times. It instantly serves as a sign of signal for your heavy hands, your heavy arms drop down into your lap or to one side, whatever feels most comfortable. You. Your eyes will remain tightly closed, your heavy heads will fall forward to your chest on one side. Once again, the very second I come round and touch you on the back of the hands and command the word sleep, it instantly serves as a sign of signal for your heavy hands to drop down into your lap. Your eyes remain tightly closed, your heavy head will fall forward to one side, you'll instantly allow yourself to drop into a deep relaxing state of trance. That is. And then, completely silently, because I have this thing about, um, apart from the word sleep, I have this thing at the start of my show during my pre-talk. I say to the audience, who thinks hypnosis is bullshit? And there's always a few hands go up. Not very many, because there's some people who don't dare put their hands up. But there's a lot of hands, few hands go up. And I say at the start, I, my job tonight isn't to try and convince you people that hypnosis is real. It's just to give you a good laugh. But if I can convince you along the way, then that would be really cool as well. And I then go on to say, notice, during this evening show, I'm holding a microphone. And every word that I say will be said into this microphone, which will come out through these two speakers. And you'll hear everything. And I make that point. And nothing is then stage whispered to these people until, you know, maybe, maybe if they're well into routines and I want to give them a suggestion that won't be funny if the audience know what's coming, then I'll do it. But that's irrelevant because they're hypnotised by this point. And I've had audiences who watch for it. You can see that kind of, and they're, they're, if, I, if, I, if, I do, if I was to drop the mic away, the people at the front would lean in to try and listen to what I'm going to say. So what I do is I say that bit, I then want my hands free to be able to do this. Although you can do it with the mic in your hands, but it's pointless. So I pop the mic down and mic in the stand. I then walk forward to the person I'm going to go to first, so say they're sat here in the middle, and I very clearly keep my mouth shut, and all I do is this, sleep. 
So they can hear me say the word sleep, and the audience can see that without any shadow of doubt, the only word I'm saying to any of these people is sleep. And I over, although it sounds quite normal, sleep, to them, they can see I'm just saying the word, but that's all they can hear. So it means that, um, so that's, that's how I built that in. So it's, it's almost, it's not, you could actually do it. I used to, I, when I first started doing it, it was just a case of the only cue to go into trance for them was, I just said, when I come around and touch you on the back of the hands. But I found, although it was very, it was, it was really low resistance then, it's become even lower resistance since I've included the words, I'm gonna command the word sleep and you'll drop into trance. I've added that bit on to the second bit within the last six, six to 12 months. And it's, uh, the, the success rate of it's rocketed. So I think that's worth pointing out. Uh, apart from that, that's more than everything on it. I, as I said, I, there's a few different, the only, the only other variation of it Alex has, uh, which Alex came up with, is the standing seat. So you can do it standard. Uh, basically, oh, stood standard, stood. Um, standing basically, up. <laughs> standing stood up. up was what I meant to say. Uh, do you want to do it, or do you just want to? Um, go on then, just get in position. I won't do all the waffle, because you know what, it, what the lead up is. So they've got their eyes closed. And uh, you say, I'm going to tap you on the back, uh, yeah, tap, touch, whatever. I'm going to tap you on the back of the hands in a few moments' time. It won't bother you, worry you or concern you in any way. It's just a sign and a signal to allow every nerve fibre tissue and muscle in your body from the tips of your toes to the tips of your fingers to become so limp, so loose, so relaxed, so heavy and so tired, and you'll keep your eyes tightly closed at all times unless I say otherwise. And sleep. So if you've got them stood up, it's pretty similar, it's the same, it's identical seesaw movement, it's just that as they come towards you, you're doing what you do on the rolling forwards induction and then lowering and turning them down, it just looks yeah. dramatic. So I think uh, the other thing is it, it became quite useful because they were increasingly venue, they were, I did a couple of house parties um, for in larger houses but their front rooms are still not really big enough to do a hypnosis show in very easily and do fallbacks and things. So it just became handy to be able to do an induction that happened entirely in their chairs. And then I showed it to Alex and he was impressed. And then we- <laughs> Very impressed, yeah. So he paid me money and we put it on a DVD. Yeah. And then um, that was it really. And now, I mean, you've seen my show a lot. Rachel's obviously seen my show hundreds of times. And between them, Stu Pot's seen it a lot of times. Between them, they'll vouch that it is now the only induction I ever use for anything. And um, well, I know Stuart used it. And yeah. uh, go on, we like your story, John. I know what. Well, my sister wanted some work doing um, a shepherd of phobia spiders and she realised that she was passing it on to the children. She didn't want them to learn the same same thing. <clears throat> so she said, will you do some work on me? I said, well, fair enough. I'll do some. And the last time I, we came here, you did this season, showed it hurts. I went to her house that night and thought, I'm going to try this. Now, although the pre-talk, well, the talking part of it takes a long about, but from the every hands start, from the start to that, it's actually put no under. When I looked at my watch, it was 25 seconds, and I didn't look at my watch straight away. Yeah, it was like, oh, how long was that? Someone's so it's a round about 20 minutes. With your own induction! I've only just remembered you didn't tell me that. And the thing about <laughs> it was as well, which was really strange, I did panic a little bit, because I went to do the, I went, I was thinking about doing the seesaw, doing the seesaw, mm -hmm. but what she'd done is she was sat on the area of her on the edge of her settee. And this hand hadn't gone down that far compared to this hand going up. And her hand had gone so high, if I'd left it any longer, she probably would have ended up just going back and probably going under there. But because I wanted to do the sheets a lot, I panicked a little bit, and I went forward and, and did it when it was really, really high. I didn't really want it to, to get to that high because it meant I had to go. Actually, yeah, that is a point. If, if their right hand, if they're particularly suggestible, if you want to look at it in that way, I know that neither I or Alex do, but if they are particularly suggestible and for whatever reason that, they do end up like this. And the audience find this hilarious, by the way. If everyone else is kind of between here and here and somebody else is like this, the audience think it's hilarious. So obviously you go to them first for fairly obvious reasons. And you just just reach up, just reach over it. It's a pain in the neck, but just reach over and grab their hand. And, and I make a real effort of it. I make it look actually have a seat for me and just be okay. awkward with your hands. Be as awkward. Far as you can. Okay, sure. left, right. Uh... So down, 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 down. So they're like this, and I might I make a real meal of it. Make a couple of gags into the microphone for, and sort of try and work out how I can. And really, I mean, I could do that easily, but just try and look like it's a real struggle, and the audience think it's even funny. There's pretty much in every show there'll be one person that's like this. And then you, but it's the same thing. 
There's no reason why you can't do it, I told them. <laughs> so that's it. Um, and I'm gonna go upstairs, yeah, man. Yeah, and that's that's it, I think. Unless there's anything else. God knows how it took us so long to teach you on the DVD, but. Because, uh, well, actually, because on the DVD, we go into loads more variations. But I think, you know, in combination with all the other 20 odd, whatever it was, induction methods we've gone through, that y y y hopefully now um, really should never need to learn anything more about induction well, methods. I would honestly say, because it, it really doesn't look like that should work. And I've had several hypnotists, again, who shall remain nameless, who pretty much before this whole street hypnosis thing kicked off. Uh, and, and everyone was very friendly and nobody to leave me on Facebook or anything. Uh, there was a few people sent me messages saying, you know, I watched the clip of it, because we did it for Galaxy Manchester, and uh, I put the clip of me doing it on the breakfast presenter on YouTube, where you did. Yeah. And um, people looked at it and went, ah, it can't be, as, can't be as easy or as good as it is, and then they went out and tried it and found out that it worked. So I'd suggest at least give it a go, even if it's just on your wife or your partner or your friend or whatever, just have a, have a try and see how it works. But the... Um, the, the big thing is that uh, I, I, the only other thing I found makes a difference and it's worth pointing out because somebody missed the point of this at some point when I taught it once. Um, before this, I've got the volunteers up, you have your bit banter, have a chat, whatever you want to do. The way that I run into this isn't I'm going to hypnotise you. I don't say anything along the line, I mean I wouldn't anyway, but I don't say anything along the lines of we're about to hypnotise you now. I just do it as if I was going to do a suggestibility test. I don't tell them, you know, they've got, when they, when they start this, I just tell them it's a test of their imagination to see who are the most imaginative, creative, etc, etc, etc. So they actually go into this not thinking they're going to be hypnotised yet, that they're just playing a game, you know, this, this ima imagination test, test of their imagination. So it's not until they're in this position, and then I say, I do the bit about, I'm going to come around and touch you on the back of the hands, you'll feel you'll drop down to a deep state of hypnotic trance. And that makes a difference, actually, because if you're doing the locked hands test or any other suggestibility test, or any test at all, and they get to this point, and she's, they're, they're like, right, you've proven your point, I, got, I can't get my hands apart, okay? You've proven, your, that's, that's going to be, you know, if they can't get their hands apart, they know that's the end of the suggestibility test, there's nowhere else that can go. They can't get their hands apart unless you tell them otherwise. So they're at this point now, when you come over and bring them forward, there's this real moment of, oh, this is this. This is it. It's like when you go up, 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 up that roller coaster, up a roller coaster, you get to the point, you think, oh, this is about to drop, you can see the drop, you know you're about to go. It's the same sort of feeling psychologically. So they're like, right, I can't get my hands apart. Then you pull, you, I'm going to pull you forward, drag them to the front, you're knocking them about a bit. But with this, until you say that one sentence, they're still, oh, I'm just, I'm just testing my imagination now. There's nothing to be worried about, there's nothing to be frightened of, there's nothing to be scared of. Because it's not until you say that sentence, and then by then it's pretty much too late, because, you know, 40 seconds later, all of those people will be like this. So that's the other thing that's worth pointing out. You're not, you don't sell this in any way as a hypnotic induction to the public. I sell this as, as this is just a test of your imagination. And then, oh, you're so conveniently wonderful, I might as well just hypnotise you in a few seconds, because I can't. So that's how I sell it, and that's, that's worth pointing out, I think. But apart from that, that's everything. Good man. Cheers, dude. And, uh, you know, as Rob said, that's pretty much all I use. It's all I pretty much use. Uh, well, certainly, I don't do as many dropbacks these days because I'm back. Let's put it that way. Okay, so inductions, you should know how to create your own now, frankly. Uh, you know what to say when they're under. You've got ideas for routines. Um, right, once they're under, the major post-hypnotic suggestion, quite simply, for the rest of this evening, whenever I say sleep as quickly as that, I'll tap the microphone, as quickly as that, a snap of the fingers, you'll instantly close your eyes, let your head fall forward onto your chest, and you'll instantly re-enter this state. Except each and every time you do, it'll be a hundred times deeper, more relaxing and enjoyable for you. And if I should say that it's cold, you'll imagine it's a hundred times colder. If I say it's hot, you'll think it's a hundred times hotter because your imaginations are enhanced. It's like we said before, telling them what to do, when to do it, and how to react. It's no more complicated than that. Obviously, you've told them that you're only talking to them if you touch them on the shoulder or indicate otherwise. We've already covered that. That's common sense. If you leave the rooms, all's cancelled out. If it is a tall stage, then you've got your white line or yellow line across the front, a good six inches or a foot back, so, and you tell them it's like a force field that they won't go over, they won't go over that line, so they can't accidentally be dancing like Elvis and off the edge of the stage. It's happened at Glasgow Pavilion to uh, Robert Halpern. 
he got fined, well, fined, sued for 10 grand, and I think the venue had to pay out 90 grand in damages as well. So it, it's also a legal requirement to uh, make sure. Everything in the mines in hand. Oh, Waiting, we covered that before, so you already know that. So deepness, once you've done the end of the seesaw, the eyes are closed, or the drop back. If you want to deepen one person, Say I'm talking to you if I tap you on the shoulder and then gently tap them on the shoulder. Otherwise, say I'm talking to everybody on the stage. It is just common sense. Classic deepness. Just imagine in your mind's eye a staircase with ten steps. Ten steps down to further relaxation and tra tranquility. And then you count backwards. Ten down to one. And with each number you come out with one of the standard phrases that's in the course notes, such as, you know, nine. Every nerve, fibre, tissue and muscle in your body from the tips of your toes to the tips of your fingers becoming so limp, oh, so loose, so relaxed, so heavy and so tired like a loose, limp rag doll, eight, the deep you go, and so on. A number, then one of these standard phrases that's just waffle. But some may argue sets up a loop of deepening, like we talked about before. The deeper you go, the better you feel, and so on. Or you can imagine, get them to imagine an elevator going down ten floors, or if you're in England, a lift. Or you can tell them that in a moment I'm going to lift your arm up, it won't bother you, worry you or concern you, but I'm just going to let it drop down to your side, and when it does, it's a sign and a signal to drift down, sink down 100 times deeper, more relaxing and enjoyable for you. And with the hand up, always before you touch people, warm them so it's not a shock. Lift it up and drop it. If it doesn't feel that heavy when you lift it, so in other words, it seems to be resisting, use that finger flick to make sure it flicks down so they come to believe that it's happening to them. Deepness, gentle rock and back tap. Well, with the arm pull, the body flop, the moment they're gone, they're just gently tapping the back and gently rocking them. So that's a non-verbal deepener that's going on while you're giving the verbal deepness. We talked about what basic fractionation is already. So you've done maybe a drop back, you wake them up, one, two, you're wide awake, up you get, don't worry, we've got the driver's name, we've got his number, take your seat there and just sleep. Next one, so that's stage one. And then you might go up to them and say, wide awake, what's your name? John, nice to meet you, John, sleep. The idea being that every time they go back in, they're going deeper and I'd say they're just more compliant and getting conditioned more. Finger clicks, yeah, you could just have them all, you know, flaked out with the drop back or whatever and go every time I click my fingers like this, or you can tap the mic to create the finger click effect, uh, you'll believe that, you know, you're going 100 times deeper. Basically, you tell them something is going to happen or you're going to say something or do something and then the result will be uh, relaxation. So that essentially is deepening, the awakenings we've covered. So I very quickly want to make mention of... A little gizmo that is illegal for use under the 1952 Hypnotism Act. Okay, so clearly you would not use this if you were doing a licensed performance. But if you wanted to do some mind magic, imagination exercises such like, you may choose to use it. Uh, you also would ideally know in advance whether the person was epileptic. Because you'd have done your pre-talk, wouldn't you? So you wouldn't use this on someone who's epileptic, because it's likely to start to fit. But the key thing is if someone can think that they have felt something strange that they wouldn't normally, then generally speaking, they'll think they've been hypnotised. Now, at Black Tool Magic Convention a few years back, I saw this little LED lighting device that's strapped to your finger, and you pressed it with one, you could strap it to your finger. I don't know what it was sold for, but I thought, ha ha, and I got one, and I thought, yeah, I can just about switch it on with my thumb, and if I keep my fingers together, it's not too obvious that there's light there, only if I did that would you see the light, so I could turn it on, it's flashing, and I can turn it off, the audience don't know it's there, I can ditch it in my pocket, I thought, what if you could get it on your finger, come in front of the face, switch it on as you pull their head back with their eyes closed for the drop back and they're going to be getting this weird light show going on. So I'm like, what the fuck's happening inside my head? 
It must be hypnosis. Um, Bob Little Magic in America had them. I, I think he's got them on his website. And it worked wonderfully. I tried it out at the convention and there's actually still comments somewhere in the archives of the Magic Cafe, uh, are you feeling sleepy section, from a guy called Russ, a big, huge guy who does an illusion act to have dropped out in the bar area. And then a short while down the line, I came across these. They are clip-on spotlights that you can buy in. TJU's have them, you can get them online. Apparently Morrison's have got them at the minute. But they're called clip-on spotlights. You can get them on eBay if you're in a different country. Pound shops tend to have them. But on eBay they have them, they're called mini clip-on spotlights. You take the clip off, which it's naturally made to do anywhere. And conveniently, the way it's been made, <laughs> you might want to get a close-up here. Russell, there are pictures on the bonus disc and details of where to buy them, but the way it's been made, it beautifully gives you something to hold it with your thumb. It's ergonomically designed for the purpose. And in this position, it's nice and easily palmed and hidden. Palmed out your pocket or into your pocket. And all you need to do is take one finger and push it back against the skin on your hand to push that in and then let go and on comes the light. One finger back, let go and the light's off. Nice and easy to do. On, off. So you can get that out of your pocket, you've got your volunteer, you're ready, they're stood here. Feet together, hands by your side, tilt your head well back. It's still off at the minute, so I'll do it sideways on there, facing that way. It's still off. Your audience are over there, so they don't know of the existence of this. And then you just flick it on. So obviously anyone at that angle would get it. But I'd swear then, when you point it at their eyes, like that wolf thing, just <laughs> close your eyes, yeah? Just tell me, it's a little bit weird. If you didn't know this was going to happen, and that suddenly happens, yeah? It's a bit, what the heck's going on, isn't it? because your eyes are closed and you don't expect that sort of thing going on and it's like, we'll light down. But none of the audience know the existence of that. So you switch it on, person's got it off, and the fact is they're going backwards. You can ditch this in your pocket as you walk away from them. This doesn't exist. Later on, they're describing how the, there was lights flashing and all this. Everyone will confirm they weren't, further enhancing the fact that they experienced hypnosis. Um, experimenting recently there we go experimenting recently I found these bicycle lights for sale two for a pound in a pound shop they're a bit bigger but you can pound them like that quite easily unfortunately they're a bit of a ball egg to switch on because you've got to press that thing there but what I discovered is because it's one press to get it on flashing one to stop it flashing, one off. But if you've got that in your pocket, at some point, you can knock that button so it's now on. I know that's now on flashing. But it's not flashing enough that it's obvious to anyone. And then when you want it, you can put your hand in onto it, bring it out, because no one's expecting it, and you just go in, feet together, hands by your side, till you're asleep, sleep, sleep, sleep. That gives a really weird, lighty, flashy, because sure, they've got their eyes closed and that's suddenly what the hell's going on uh, something you might want to experiment with but make sure they're not epileptic and make sure it's not in the context of hypnosis and um, even more recently in a pound shop probably get them online this is Playful Pets the brand there's pictures of these on the disc it's a, a flashing dog collar I vis dog collar and this is even dinkier. But look at this. That is quite... Believe me, that... Whoa, that's even more... And it's red and blue, so it's even more bloody. Now, the trouble is, it needs to be twisted on and off. Now, I did work this out, but I've not got round to doing it. We'll be to get some wire cutters, snip that key ring element off, and take, like, a bit of a pencil or something, snap it, and glue this bloody thing, the back, onto a pencil. So if my finger's the pencil, glue it on like that. So that then you can finger palm the pencil like that, 
But because the pencil's stiff and rigid, you'll just be able to move it with your thumb on and off. And as you can see, that is even brighter than the others, and that really knackers the rise up. The audience don't know of his existence, but it creates that I've been hypnotised feeling. Sorry, no, it doesn't, because you can't use it, can you, with a lot under the 52 Act? But it creates that I've got wonderful imagination and experience some mind magic type feeling. So, can you combine these techniques with magic? Can you combine them with mentalism, mind reading? Can you combine them with cold reading, which is a technique of apparently looking like you can read people's fortunes? Yes, you can. For example, if you're going on the radio, cold reading wise, use a rapid induction on someone that you're going to be in the studio with on air beforehand, put them under, and suggest to them that everything you say to them on air, they'll just agree with. By the way, go on air and go, you know, I'm getting this feeling that, you know, sometime in the past you went on holiday to this place, and this happened, and this happened. And they're going, yeah, yeah, you look like the world's greatest sidekick. And then afterwards, obviously, went back on and said, they'll remember to forget, and forget to remember that that was suggested to them. Uh, that's one way of doing it. Or hypnotise them and get them to tell you key things like genuine information about themselves. Then tell them they've forgotten they've told you. Go on air and or on stage if you're done pre-show. And their faces are going to be, how the heck did you know that? Because they don't want to admit that they're attention seekers, so they're really going to give the correct reaction. Can you use it with magic and mind reading tricks? Of course you can. Darren Brown does it all the time, loads of people do. Generally speaking, Darren Brown, when it looks like he's hypnotising somebody, he isn't. And when it look, doesn't look like he is, he is. That's very generally speaking. Uh, uh, E.g., you know, uh, the, um, they thought he was invisible. Quite clearly, before filming, they'd been hypnotised. It's the Invisible Man routine. But if you start the camera filming after the suggestions have been given, and then the trigger is banging the desk, sir, the post hypnotic is when I bang the desk, I'm invisible, it looks like some major mind control because their eyes are open all the time. It's not a case of stuff that's edited out of the shows, it's not. It's just that they start filming after some stuff's already taken place. And there's a lot of depth about that in the e-books and the audios that's on the disc that you get with these DVDs and that you take away with you. There's stuff on the Mind Magic, there's a complete course on cold reading, so if you choose to read tarot cards, astrology or whatever, you could do. Uh, there is my entire script, because sadly we're running out of time, there's my entire script, both in the format of written text for reading and audio exactly the way I say it, word for word, so you can hear the pauses, the, 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 the stereotypical voice tones for what I call complete mind therapy, which is my approach for therapy. Um, so you can listen to that, read the script and learn it if you so desire, or just be lazy, sit down, read the script into a microphone on a computer, put some copyright free background music on it, and then you've got your master disc, because of the way it's worded it will cover for any problem, you've got your master disc for selling your stop smoking, your weight loss, your confidence and what have you after the show, back of the room sales. Actually, to that regard, on the dish you're taking away with you or you get with these DVDs, you'll find one of the folders says, Resale Rights. It's only the four items in the folder that says Resale Rights that you've got legal rights to duplicate and sell. None of the rest of the information and the copy of the license agreement's in there. But there is already a master copy of a... Stop smoking, weight loss, confidence and stress relief. Hypnotherapy tracks that are specific to that problem with words in like, you know, you no longer need one crave or desire for cigarettes or tobacco. The professional recordings, you've got the right to duplicate them and sell them. Put your name on the CD covers. But, well, because they won't hear your voice on there, what would be wise to do is but scripted by, or hypnotic consultant Terry Wells, voiced by, and I've forgotten the name of the person, but it's, the details are on the disc. So then there's no shock, but it's still attached to, brilliant, his show was brilliant, oh, he's involved in this, yes, I'll buy one. There's also um, a little book in there, only a few pages, about 30 that you could get printed up as a pamphlet, a type book, 
on hypnosis, some basic self-hypnosis that you can sell at the back of the room, and but you, you can rebrand it with your own name. I've included that so that you so you can get started. You'll find all your suppliers, all the links, you'll find all the stuff for the councils if you're in England, you'll find the stuff for the insurance for England, America and pretty much various places in the world, both for stage hypnosis, hypnotherapy and also for my magic persuasionism. Uh, what else? Well, yeah, there's business plans in there to tell you how to make money from hypnotherapy, there's business plans in there telling you how to get gigs. The sources for your photos, your posters, your brochures. Basically, with the dish you're walking away with today, or in the case of the DVDs, that is the DVD ROM that comes with the video footage, you never need to buy anything else in terms of instructional training to become a successful, legal, lawful, ethical, licensed where needed, insured, and safe, competent, Comedy stage, or street, impromptu, whatever, hypnotist, or my magician persuasionist. All of the stuff is on that dish, you will learn the cool, everything. If you choose to go and buy all the stuff that I, rec uh, you know, I recommend, fine, that's your choice. But I'd say if you do choose to buy all the stuff, be sensible. Get the things like the book on the laws. Um, Get the books I recommend on the disc that are relevant to marketing show business acts to get yourself gigs and work. In terms of actually putting a show together, you've now got all the pieces of the jigsaw. And those pieces of the jigsaw are essentially the same for therapy. Although we will go in way more depth at the end of the month, don't we, Mark? You're thinking, well, it's a point in coming at the end of the month. But um, it is essentially for the basic problems, smoking, weight loss, confidence and stuff, the same. Get rapport with them. Do a suggestibility test. Put them under. Bit of ego strengthening, make them feel good. Do the therapy. Implant the post-hypnotic, which in this case is that whenever they listen to the audio CD you give them to walk away with, it'll be a hundred times more effective each time they listen to it than if you were actually in the room with them, and then waking them from trance. As for the therapy, it's a bit of common sense. There are actually scripts on the dish you take away, you could read word for word. They've got their eyes closed, they don't know if you take out the script at that point and read it. Or, just use your noddle. If they smoke and they want to stop, then the suggestions are that they no longer do it, it's in the past. E.g. you no longer need one crave or desire for cigarettes and tobacco in any way, shape or form. If they're not doing something they want to do, like they've got a lack of confidence, then it's you know, from this moment forward, you've got a huge inner reservoir of willpower, self-confidence and self-esteem that you can draw upon as an automatic reflex action whenever you need to. It's just a bit of common sense. But, to save you time, I suppose this could be called the lazy man's guide to stage and street hypnosis. Not just the transparency template, because it's all on the dish you'll walk away with from today. And on that particular note, as I said before, please don't rush off because we just need to get one or two other shots. But I think very quickly, are there any, did, did this make sense by a show of hands? And this isn't a compliancy thing to put your hand up. It's honestly, I want to know, if, if this made sense this weekend? Would it make sense? you nodding, brilliant. Yeah, honestly, yeah? Do you think this is like simple enough that you could put it into action? Yeah? yeah? Well, that is the key. The only thing stopping you from doing any of this is you personally getting off your ass, looking at the di bonus disc and checking stuff, then referring back to the notes, practicing, and go you've got to go out there and do it. Some people think that it being oversimplified this way means that there's something missing. I've not told you the entire truth or something. I can assure you there is nothing else you need to know to be able to do stage or street hypnosis. On that note, please don't be rushing off, because I hope we're going to have a drink together before you disappear. I uh, would like to thank each and every one of you for the fun times we've spent in the bar, and hopefully we'll do later. And the chats we've had, obviously keep in touch, my contact details are on there if you've not already got them. And uh, thank you for your time. I hope you take at least something useful away from this weekend. And, you know, I need to get off and ring my young niece and tell her what a wonderful audience you've been. Thank you. Good night. Hey!
Thank you. 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 Thank you.